to everybody. Good evening. Uh, it's Monday, December 4, 6.30 p.m., Public Safety Building Committee meeting. Call the meeting to order. Looks like all members are present uh, but Mr. Moorhead. Uh, first order of business is uh, meeting minutes from November 2nd. Can we get a chance to review those? Any uh, comments? Um, I did, it, w while you're nine pages of, uh, I did find a few missing letters. Um, so with the committee's approval, I'll uh, hand those to Mr. Uh, Lyons to add those in. The only um, item I just wanted to make sure everyone was comfortable with us changing was under item four, um, where we were talking about the change order process. Uh, the meeting minutes currently read, this meeting would have to occur in 48 out in less than 48 hours and would need the vote of the committee. Um, I think what we said was it, we need at least 48 hours so that we could meet the open meeting law. Um, so I just changed it to that. Those are my proposed edits. Are there any other proposed edits uh, to the meeting minutes? Is there a motion to approve the meeting minutes as edited? Is there a second? Mr. Wood seconds. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Any opposed? Abstain. Mr. Rooney's abstaining. Yeah. It literally is a great story of the meeting, so. Uh, item three is chairman's update. So our last meeting was now um, over a month ago. Uh, I've had, since that time, we've had the uh, planning board hearing one, conservation commission um, hearing as well. The one thing that came out of that, that um, Context and Vertex are now doing is um, they're now having a weekly call with the town's agents to try to make sure comments are addressed and understood real time so that um, when they appear before planning and conservation again, um, at least the agent's comments and any peer review comments are addressed um, so that then it's really the, gonna be questions from the board members that has to happen in public discussion as opposed to trying to seek clarification on the spot in hearings with obviously only limited information in front of everyone. So um, I did listen into their first discussion last week. I think it's a very productive discussion um, and I'd encourage and thank uh, both Vertex and Context for taking that extra time and hopefully it smoothens the process uh, to completion. There's obviously a lot of moving parts that Jeff will walk us through um, in a little bit. Uh, we are scheduled to appear in front of the Board of Selectmen tomorrow night. Um, if you recall, um, early on in the process, we said we'd be back right after Thanksgiving once we understood where we stood from a cost perspective. Uh, we're obviously going to go through a lot of detail tonight. Um, I will summarize the output of that meeting uh, for the Board of Selectmen tomorrow night. Um, we've also asked advisory to post and attend as well to kind of have that discussion with both boards at the same time. I think it'll lead to better collaboration um, amongst the three boards and committees as opposed to kind of doing it scattered. So uh, my understanding is advisory will be there as well. And I'm not, I'm realistic to, uh, to think that we'll probably be doing that same discussion either at the second December meeting or the first January meeting again, depending upon where we land on a final cost because as you all know there's gonna be pluses and minuses that are gonna occur between now and then. So, um, but I do think we owe them an update. We owe the town an update of where we stand and what we're doing uh, to make sure we bring this thing in on budget. Uh, those are my uh, updates that I have over the past uh, month of work. Any questions? So uh, next is, um, like I mentioned before, there was the planning board hearing number one and conservation commission hearing one. Um, I know a few members uh, attended. We did not have a quorum at either meeting. I wasn't able to attend due to shift and work schedules, but um, did listen to the replay. Um, my perspective, and would love to hear the committee's perspective before we hand it over to our consultants to hear kind of what they've done, what the feedback from those hearings are. 
Um, it continues to be a collaborative process. I think uh, every you know, planning board and conservation commission members entitled to own opini opinions, questions, et cetera, but I think it's uh, been a fair process and I think they are working with us um, you know, to bring this to completion. Uh, do I think we'll get through it with one more hearing each? Probably not, but Jeff can weigh in um, on his thoughts, but I think we're s making significant progress and I think that the project is moving in the right direction from that um, perspective. Uh, the next planning board hearing is scheduled for a week from tonight, Monday night, 7 o'clock. Um, I believe that's when we're on the agenda. It hasn't been posted yet. Conservation Commission is this Thursday. I believe it was posted for 6 p.m. for this project in this room. So this Thursday is conservation. Next Monday is planning. Like last time, I will post um, as well. I think, you know, my biggest takeaway was there are questions coming up about the operations of the departments. Um, so I think we are going to see if the chiefs can attend uh, those particular meetings to speak to that. Um, otherwise, we'll have a committee member have to speak based on what uh, impact the, we've seen over time with you know, their interactions with our committee. But I think it's you know, some questions of how the building will be used down the road is what they're looking for so that they understand what conditions, if any, uh, they need to put into place. Um, with that being said, Jeff, maybe if you could highlight just the takeaways and what you were really working towards with your engineering crew to try to resolve or bring back, and of course, any um, feedback you need from us. Sure. So um, <clears throat> I, just, I don't think I necessarily need much feedback because we don't have anything specific for you to look at. Um, Although you, we do have yeah. the sketch, you want to pass that out? Um, so, right. So the planning board um, focused a lot on the driveway connection, as you probably are aware um, already. It's probably gotten around, but that was a big part of their discussion: is the double driveways of the emergency access road and the um, driveway access, and the relative safety of the intersection on Cordoville Road. And of course, we've been uh, dealing with the police chief and the fire chief through the conceptual schematic and design de development phases about that particular issue. And from their perspective, the current setup is the best way that we could make this site work. Um, that being said, planning board, in particular, their um, uh, third party peer reviewer civil engineering firm and the planning director were really pushing for us to come up with alternatives. So in the spirit of cooperation, we told them that at the next meeting we would look at alternatives and um, one of the, is, we just have one sketch, yeah. one copy, so it's gonna get passed around, but there's an option being developed that has one single driveway going in um, to the site which would have to be shared by emergency response and the public, and then it would branch off when you get to the parking lot. We wouldn't change the rest of the site, it's just a driveway entrance, um, but you'd branch off to the left coming into the site to go to the public parking lot, and then to the right to go to the apparatus bay. And both chiefs, I previewed with the, them with this last week, both chiefs are unanimous, una unanimously opposed to this approach. Um, they feel like it's a more dangerous situation um, we'll see it in a second, but there is a very small s cost savings. Obviously, there's only one driveway, so there's reduced costs. Um, it's not a huge amount of money, but they feel like the safest approach is still with the two driveways. So I think that's really going to be the topic of discussion at our planning board meeting next. There, we will discuss lighting as well. Hopefully, we've addressed their concerns there. Um, and then there's a bunch of other engineering things that we're in the process of or, and as of tonight, hopefully, uh, when we sent them a new submission tonight, um, hopefully we'll have resolved. On the conservation side, um, that is going pretty good. I think the reality is they, they're wait, they were waiting on stormwater um, results from planning board a little bit, but also um, another review of the trees that were playing, planned to be taken down along the driveway access and the town's arborist. So I, I'm hopeful that that's underway. I don't think we have confirmation from Karen yet, but um, hopefully the town will be able to get their arborist to come out and look at it. 
and um, we can talk about it with them. Uh, did I get anything from conservation? I think that's mostly it. So meeting with conservation, as Jason said this week, planning board is next week. Because of the holiday scheduling um, and agendas, we have tentatively anticipated another planning board meeting um, in the beginning part of January. And I mean, we're hopeful we can close both hearings out, but the reality is if we're still in discussion mode with the planning board about these driveways, unless they all have a change of heart and just unanimously decide to go along with us, I suspect it's gonna be more of a working session and then we will end up having a third hearing with them in January um, to try and close it out. I think we're closer on the uh, conservation side. Um, you know, I think there's a reality that we could close it out, but I, things have been moving very quickly over the last couple of months, essentially, as we've produced the documents. So there's a lot of paperwork going back and forth between the town and our engineers and revisions. So part of the uh, hesitancy, I think, from the conservation, as well as the planning board, is because they're seeing things somewhat last minute. And because we're trying to schedule hearings quickly, we're trying to turn documents around quickly, it also doesn't give their peer reviewers a lot of time to review things. So their peer reviews are coming in a couple of days before the hearings. So they feel like the process is moving frighteningly quick for them. And um, I mean, it, it is moving quickly. I think it's possible. But um, one of the possibilities are they, they may not close the hearing because they don't feel like they've had enough time to review all of the peer review and engineering data, so we may have to have another hearing just so that let the dust settle and, and sort of review everything with a clear head. But um, we're fully engaged and trying to wrap it up as quickly as possible. So um, I guess specific to planning, and I'll ask the chief or, chief or chiefs, depending on who wants to speak, just to be on the record with their opposition and why um, in a second, just to give you forewarning. But your current design, have your engineers found anything from an engineering code, town code, or any other regulatory code that would govern the planning process that your current driveways, the two driveways as designed, violate any of those codes, go against any of those codes? Um, the way that we classify those two roads, no. And that's very specific. The one road is an emergency access drive. And I think that's one of the points we've been trying to make to the planning board from the beginning is to not look at it as two driveway curb cuts, which would be restricted to be so close together. But one is, in fact, an emergency access road. And the other one is the, the regular driveway. Um, they and their peer reviewer have consistently looked at it as two driveways. And that's part of the, the hurdle that has to be bridged. Um, so in, in our opinion, Professionally, there's no reason why we can't do it. We don't see any safety issues with it. Um, you know, there's it, there will be some getting used to of things uh, for the public. Um, we likened it to sort of like a, an interchange or an intersection for a highway where there is a lot of entrances and exits happening in a fairly close period of time. They'll have to just learn the rules of the road of how it's going to be worked. We've also developed a signage plan, very specific signage plan, to show how we're going to signage um, Portable Road as well as the driveways and talking about putting, you know, different types of pavement down at the beginning to the emergency drive so it's very clear this is a different thing and you're not supposed to just access that unless you're emergency access only. So we feel confident it, it'll work. Um, and then Related to conservation, I believe um, I received an email that I gave my opinion on, but I don't think it's fair for me to just give my opinion on. So um, there was a discussion, and please chime in if I mischaracterize this. There was a discussion at the Conservation Commission hearing um, where um, I believe one or more members uh, stated a preference for native plants, right. um, but there's nothing that says that's what has to go into the site, if, if I understand correctly. Okay. Um, in addition, there was potentially one plant that was listed on the uh, prohibited list, I think is how it was termed. Um, and your consultant, um, who's landscape architect, right, has looked on all applicable lists, both for the town right. and state and federally, whatever governs that, yep. and has determined that these plants are not prohibited at all. Correct. 
So um, I believe the question to me that was posed to me that I gave my feedback on that I said I would make sure everyone else agreed was um, should you alter your plan to meet their request or should you proceed with what you believe as a professional is the right way to develop it? Yep. Um, my feedback, subject to this committee, was proceed as you would professionally develop it. Um, and that, I think, is where our committee's job is to remind our peers on other boards and committees that if there's nothing, no rule against something, then unfortunately that's where it, the line is drawn and we've hired in the town and every taxpayer has hired professionals to give us their opinion. Um, and while I understand that these other individuals are professionals as well, um, my preference was to go with the consultants we hired and as long as they are following all the rules and regulations to proceed that way until we maybe have to compromise. But that was my feedback. I don't know if anyone has any other feedback. I think it's a small issue on the grander scheme of this project. Let me, but let me just describe it a little bit so that you get a flavor. The um, native plantings um, would essentially mute the site a little bit more. I mean, native plantings can be colorful at different times of the year, of course. Um, however, there's not as much not as much variety, not as much range they can get out of that. So the landscape architect around the building, per, per, you, mostly at the entry, um, has chosen to use some um, uh, ornamentals to give the site a little bit more interest. Um, and I think it would be something if you stood back after the project's done, I think you would appreciate that um, from the a design perspective. There's no reason at all why we can't do um, native plantings everywhere. It's just our opinion professionally is that's the right way to develop the site so there's you know a little bit more visual interest there. Um, now the majority of the plantings are native plantings and the intention is once the plants are um, hardened off and they're, they're fully um, uh, set into the landscape that there's no permanent water watering system for the plants themselves. Um, and that, that, you know, so we wouldn't be essentially tied to s sort of ongoing watering costs. Um, but, and, and the plants we're using would be uh, hardy plants for this area, of course. So we feel like it's a responsible design, um, but there was, there is no reason why we can't comply with their request. So it somewhat comes to your preference. Any thoughts or guidance? How do you feel about the plan you have? How do I what? How do you feel about the plan you have? Uh, we feel like that's the right plan. Okay, thank we'd, you. We'd rather proceed with that. Any other comments on that particular piece? I certainly ones want to see the project derail because we're arguing about a plant. So as long as that's not going to happen, I say proceed. Okay. Yeah, and that, that was really the main reason I brought it up to Jason at the point at the time is that, you know, it depends on how much it becomes an issue and how much we want to actually make it an issue on our end too. So I didn't want to be the sole spokesperson from the town's point of view, kind of making this decision. I want to make sure that we kind of made it collectively, see how the next meeting goes, what the statements are made by the Conservation Commission regarding that issue, and we'll regroup and probably have another conversation depending on the results of that. You know, if it becomes a thorn in our side and you know we're not going to get an approval without it, then we may make a different choice. But until that happens, we want to make sure we're moving things forward appropriately. I think it's important to acknowledge their feedback to explain why you're proceeding the way that you're chosen to. And also, have we informed them that the research has revealed that the plants are Right, that, that'll be, that's already been done essentially okay. in our working call that we had this week and in the information we're gonna share or we have shared with them already for this next hearing. But then in the hearing itself, we'll also address it. Super. Any other questions or comments related to the planning conservation process? Okay. <coughs> Next item on the agenda is golf course committee update. Mr. Rooney. Um, I reached out to the chair of the uh, uh, 
committee, Lou Pilecki, and I asked him for an update specifically for the purpose of, of this meeting. And he sent me an email. I'll just go over the highlights of that email. Um, the golf course committee performed a site walk with the golf course architect uh, to review the temporary and permanent locations of the clubhouse and course alterations. And the final concepts are being completed uh, now. The sole remaining design issue is the permanent site for the relocated clubhouse. Um, the golf, car golf course architect has been collaborating with Context to integrate the modifications and ensure access to the club during construction. As you know, it's important that the golf course maintain its operation during the construction of the public safety building. Um, the temporary sites for the first and ninth green are intended to allow the permanent modifications of the course to proceed simultaneously with play. In other words, as they're doing the eighth, first, and ninth tee, they want to also keep the uh, course open because they're concerned of losing members, and once you lose them, it's hard to get them back. Uh, they hope, uh, hope to have a complete concept within a week. Um, Golf Course Committee requests the full task planning network schedule for the Public Safety Building Committee so that the Golf Course Committee can develop its own time phase plans for the golf course. Not sure what that means. Jason, I think do you they know? want our s construction schedule, essentially. Yeah, that's what we understood, is that they kind of want to understand how construction would proceed. Okay. And to a certain extent, we could probably give them some a, a sort of sketch outline of what it, yet, what it might look like, but until the contractor's on board, right. we can't say specifically how they're going to. I mean, we're going to have a specific phasing, as you point out, for our access, but once phase one, essentially the clubhouse is built and the parking is there for the golfers, um, how they proceed on the... Um, and, and uh, the uh, main part of the site is probably not irrelevant, right. but, but it'll be set by the contractor. Uh, the next point, you uh, indicated that the committee is engaged with the Conservation Committee in developing the language for the restriction on the golf course once it's completed. The third item is that the committee has evaluated the response to the RFP for the golf course management contract and we'll shortly be making a recommendation to the Board of Selectmen for the choice of a management company. And the uh, Golf Course Committee has drafted a statement for a press release and would like to include anything from this committee uh, regarding this committee's activities. And they intend to forward the draft shortly for review of this committee. Um, that's a pretty comprehensive summary I can tell you, based upon my knowledge, that they have been uh, keeping an aggressive meeting schedule and are trying to make sure that they're working in lockstep with this committee. Okay. That's the highlights. Any questions for Mr. Rooney on that? I realized after I proceeded to the next one that I was going to ask the chiefs or chief to come up and just, on the record, just state your why you're objecti objecting to the... Um, single roadway, I think it's, it's not news to all of us, but more for the viewing audience, just so that there's perspective um, when we give that feedback to planning. So I don't know if one or both of you want to speak to that. I think um, when we went over this, we actually, uh, especially in citing the building where it is uh, to accommodate the golf course and also uh, the school and the field in front, so they laid out the parking lots and uh, we worked very hard on this and I know one of my concerns and I know it's the uh, same concern as the fire chief, uh, often the police, uh, if anybody's inside or even doing a backup, when a call comes in, uh, at the time it comes in, it certainly might be an emergency call, a call for an emergency response, especially uh, traffic accidents. When they come in, they'll say unknown injury, uh, both on the fire side, the police side, or any other type of call that might be an emergency or a backup. Uh, we're leaving that parking lot code too. That means lights on and you know uh, all due haste. So it, when we're looking at the plan, uh, I especially know from the police side, if you look on the far left, 
where the crews are parking is um, without this um, kind of like private road to the side and then coming through the main parking lot, the cruisers would be pulling out and then you're looking at, you know, people driving through the school lot or parking to come into the station or watching a soccer game or whatnot. And we just didn't want the cruisers leaving the, uh, the lot at a high rate of speed with lights on, with the adrenaline going, mixing with the public. I know, uh, I think it's the same on the fire side, so Joe will come up and uh, uh, he'll comment and then with the traffic mixing. So we just figured that that would be a much higher liability than uh, you know, worrying about uh, a stray car that might be coming through the access way. Thanks, Chief. No, I just, for the record, I just wanted to concur with him. When we have um, very large emergency equipment going to a call, um, the way that it was presented the other day, we're gonna put 60, 70,000 pound vehicle and the traffic of, you know, opposing traffic coming in and out of the, the one way. So um, liability wise, I think it was more problematic doing it that way than trying to separate them out. So that's, that's the reason why we did that. Thank you. Any questions for the chiefs? Okay, thank you. Uh, next item is Woodwork tra Woodward Traffic Circle update. Um, Jeff, I know your firm has been working closely with Vertex and the superintendent and her team. Any updates on where you're at on that particular process and how it ties into this? Yes, <clears throat> actually Steve's been doing quite a bit of work on that from Vertex uh, as well, coordinating and had a meeting on site with the uh, superintendent and I think traffic engineer was there, I'm not sure he was there. Um, basically it quickly became apparent that the only way that was gonna work was for the buses to pull in the public safety public driveway, travel towards the school through the parking lot through a one-way connection between the public safety lot and Woodward Circle and drop kids off in front of the school <coughs> so that the doors for the bus were facing the school side of the road. As you know, as they come in now, the doors are facing the field and they have to do a loop around so that they can drop kids off on the right side. So uh, I know previously we've been talking about it is that maybe the buses would go out through our site, but that just doesn't make any sense from a traffic flow point of view and from a safety point of view for the kids. So uh, the only thing being studied at this point is buses traveling through the site in order to get to the school. And it would be a bus only connection and it would be a one, one way connection between the public safety lot and the school. Um, so the intention is, is that you know, we limit the amount to the 15 buses essentially morning and afternoon that would come through One there. five? What's that? 15? Yeah, that's what I understand is 15 buses. And so would there be some sort of gate or something closing? They would like a gate. Um, practical experience has taught me that uh, gates don't usually get closed ever. Maybe the first week, you know, somebody's zealous about it, but after that, people just don't keep up with it. So they usually stay open. Now we could certainly put a gate out there. It wasn't intended to put one there, but we could put one there. And it would just be up to the town to operate it or the school to operate it. Um, that would keep people from trying to cut through, although I'm not sure how much of a problem that would be. I think the more of the likelihood would be that occasionally you'll have parents trying to drop kids off in the public safety lot and have them walk you know, over to the school, potentially. But, um, but there certainly wouldn't be any um, legal traffic route from the school through the public safety lot. It would be one way or the other direction. So is there anything you can see us needing to do or escalate with the school committee at this time? Or you think it, that process is smooth and Yeah, I think the next year. step that I understand it is that they're, the traffic engineer is doing some studies for the school. And then once that information is complete, they're going to have a meeting with the school committee to sort of <coughs> present the option and kind of get buy-in. But do you want to add to that? Steve? Yeah, just a couple uh, caveats. The, the direction of traffic going up to public safety and up to the school and then out at the school, uh, it was presented by the traffic engineer that that doesn't, it sound, it actually will be better than it sounds 
because of the uh, traffic improvements at the intersection. With the widening, the backup won't be as much as it is today. So that won't be as bad. It'll be okay. At Main, at Main Street, yes, thank you. Um, the traffic flow up through uh, the public safety and up to the school, it wasn't decided, we didn't decide anything, we just looked at a lot of things, that it should be limited to buses because uh, early drop-off, I think it's Tuesdays and Thursdays, there's a fitness or something program there at the school, and the parents drop off up at the upper circle now. And that was orderly, and, and per the superintendent and the principal's comments, that was okay, so there's no reason why that those uh, same cars couldn't access up through public safety and up on the same path to drop off in the very same place that they are today. Um, but maybe a, a limitation on the timing just as exists today that you can't use that drive during the restricted bus hours. Um, so that's being studied all per to, uh, to come out from VHB. Uh, one last piece that will be very helpful is as the buses come in today, they actually have to stop if other buses have come around and are dropping off kids because they have the stop sign up on the bus, so they have to wait way over here before they go up and turn around and come back. So if they come in from public safety, that won't happen because they won't be passing each other on that. So that will work far better. So uh, no conclusions, but uh, VHB will come out with their report as to what their recommendation is. But uh, the superintendent's reaction to dropping off on the wrong side was not it was a non-starter, not a safer situation whatsoever. So that, that changed or, or directed that conversation immediately from there. That was it. Thank you. And how do you plan to propose responding to any traffic flow concerns that come out of planning? Right, because I think they're looking at this site as one thing. It seems like that work is still in process. We clearly have an issue of two versus one driveway are we prepared to pre present a final, this is how we would think it would flow, or do we think that just doesn't fall within that purview of that process at this point? Um, it's tangentially related, and I know the planning board's gonna wanna know what we're doing with it, um, and we did present it in our first hearing. So they already know about it, they know it's potentially going to happen, and we're presenting as part of this project. The traffic engineer spoke to the traffic volume, the buses, um, that would be created on our site, which is only the only purview of the planning board has, not the school property. Um, so I think the reality is in the, the traffic counts have essentially already been done, and whichever way we go can be implemented within the current structure that we have set up. Our preference is to be able to have a decision one way or the other is how the school wants to go prior to our final hearing so it can be memorialized in our approved plans. But I don't think, this is just my opinion, I don't think the board, planning board, would look at whichever direction the buses are going as being a substantial change to what has already been presented. It's just simply refining what's been presented. So I, I don't see an issue with it. Mr. Rooney? Yeah, just to unpack this gate issue, um, is it your sense that the school wants to have access just for the buses for drop-off and pick-up coming through the public safety? Uh, what I would no? say is they want to have control over when and who comes through the gate. Um, whether it's, as Steve was mentioning, in addition to buses, whether it's this early morning fitness program drop-off where they might want to have parents coming up that way as well, okay. one time only or twice a week. But I think they, they just want to use the gate as a method to control who is coming onto the school property at what time. Um, because, uh, you know, they're, obviously it's their, it's their property and, and yeah, sure. you know, they well, want to One of the questions I have is that I assume that there's a percentage, whether it's 10%, 20% of, of of parents who actually drop their kids off and don't take the bus. And if, if they are not allowed to use that public safety uh, driveway, say for instance in the morning, the buses will be coming this way and they'll be coming this way, Where are they still gonna be able to turn around at the circle? So the parents that they currently come to drop their kids off go down to the lower lot okay. when the buses are up there. All right. And there's some traffic that can come up handicapped, that sort of thing, and that's sort of handled by the school, but most of the parents that are dropping kids off go to that lower lot, which is sort of out of the 
currently it's in the flow of the buses, right. but in this new plan potentially it would be less disruptive to how the buses flow. So the um, before school program is called Wake Up and Work Out. It's extremely popular about, on any given day, about half the kids participate. That's how good it is. So I think it's great that they'll let them use it for that. But during the day when the buses have come and gone, are you saying that parents can use the driveway or not? The public safety driveway? Yeah. So I don't know. You want to talk about yeah, it? The, the idea is to not have the rules be any different for the public safety driveway as they are to access the upper lot now. No limitations other than what's in place now. Okay, so during the day when the bus is coming on, you can use the driveway to get up to, to the school. Is that the case now? We were there early before buses were there? I, I, I yeah, don't there, know. There's no, well, there's when you no go, you that. certainly can yeah. do it. Um, yeah, so I would think, yeah. I think that's, a tr I think yeah. that's the I, case. I think so, that, that parents during the day can use the upper lot. I, yeah. think, I think it's so. gonna take a lot, or at least some training of parents, because they see the people going early, they can do it, and then they see the buses going in, they're gonna have to, there's going to be, have to be some education to not use that. It, yeah, so we know so it's a small population, though, with just a couple of grades. So I, I think after a quick yeah. learn, yeah, you and know, I, I think they'll be there. I, I think that's also, they've got a captive community as well, yeah. too. So they have a messaging system that can get out to those parents that will help control some of that. But uh, there's always going to be the few that. Yeah, I mean, I think both drop offs are on the other side of the school anyway. So it's not that you're close down here on this side. So everything would be happening. The parents drop off. Yes, okay. yes, down on the other side of the building. Anything further on that? Okay. Communications dispatch update. Uh, Chiefs, I don't know if you want to give any updates on uh, progress with radios and communications. So right now, uh, we're scheduled for next Monday, the 11th at 1.30. Uh, Vertex has got a consultant coming in to help us look at the uh, system and uh, vet out any concerns with the vendors. Um, one vendor would be using similar equipment that we have right now. Another vendor would be using different equipment. I think we just kind of want to get those apple-to-apple -apple comparisons to make sure that whatever we install in there is going to work. It's going to work with our existing equipment and um, there's not going to be issues later on down the road with additional costs for um, making the system work if you know we go one way or the other and it doesn't work. Uh, so it's an important part of the project, and we want to make it sh make sure we get it right in the beginning, not have to um, have any change orders or anything like that down the road. So um, hopefully by next Monday we'll have a better answer and a better beat on where we are with that, and then we can uh, make that choice and start moving forward with it. So I don't know if uh, John has any other comments on that. No, the gentleman is the same person who helped um, situate with their combined public safety building, their combined dispatch, um, came well recommended. Um, this was after they had gone through a different consultant, three individuals who basically told, wanted to take them a completely different direction. They weren't really listening to what the town was telling them. This gentleman um, is a policeman. He does this on the side, uh, and he was very, very helpful. The deputy chief there couldn't say enough good things about him. So we're going to meet him on Monday um, for our first meeting, and hopefully we can cut through it quickly. Any questions? All right. Thanks, Chiefs. Thank you. All right, so next item, we'll probably be on this one for a while. Um, so prior to the meeting, the entire committee um, received a revised uh, cost estimate. Um, basically, if you recall from our last meeting, we authorized Context and Vertex to hire um, their own cost estimators to take the current program and provide us what they believe the um, latest and greatest cost would be. Um, as part of that process, context cost estimator was the same one that came up with the cost estimate that was used for purposes of town meeting and our schematic design. Um, over the last, I'll say, couple weeks, and I'll certainly turn it over to John and Jeff for a more detailed overview, um, those two cost estimators kind of brought their um, proposals together. 
and I think they're within about two hundred um, thousand dollars of each other in terms of exact um, cost. So for purposes of the summary document that was circulated in advance of the meeting, um, there's basically a few themes that I figured I would highlight and, and try to hopefully set tone for where we take this discussion. Um, the construction on the site is coming in approximately $2.1 million higher than previously budgeted. The construction of the actual building itself is coming in almost precisely the same within $44,000. And netted against that would be um, the escalation of $626,000. So for the construction of the building and the site itself, if you just accepted these cost estimates mm -hmm. as is, um, the, those two items would be approximately $1.4 million greater um, than what we had used to budget for purposes of town meeting. Now, I think it's important for me to provide kind of my overview and my thoughts, just having answered some questions along the way from these gentlemen, is this is supposed to be the point where we kind of have that, that moment where we have to sit back and, and make some, start to make some tough decisions. Um, well, of course, we would like the number to have come in lower. I think if it had come in lower, we probably wouldn't be doing the same job that we've all been appointed to do. And I think this is now where our consultants will earn their money and where we as committee members will need to have honest feedback on certain portions of the site itself, um, given that that seems to be the greater issue um, of, of where we could potentially live without things, obviously with the input of both departments. Um, I think it's also important that I've learned, at least through this process, that these cost estimates are likely higher than what bids would come in at if we were to go out to bid today. So this is not the final cost. So um, for everyone, this is not saying that the project is over budget. Because um, quite honestly, if we would be within our contingency still. What I think we as a committee owe it to the town and what I would like to be able to promise after this meeting tonight to the uh, Board of Selectmen tomorrow is that we are working to reduce that 1.4 million to as low a number as possible so that we, when we go out to bid, we are still not projecting to use any material amount of the contingency. So um, with that opening in mind, what I thought it would be helpful to do is to the extent that context and vertex have any um, items they would like to point out to us, I think the most important would be for context to point out um, what happened with the site um, and, and why that's $2 million different approximately minus the escalation clause. Um, and then what I think our time is all best spent is evaluating um, what I believe the consultants will use as value engineering of how you reduce that number and see where we end up tonight. And um, my guess is we're gonna need some more time and the consultants will need some more time to come up with more ideas um, to bring forward to us and we can talk about uh, future meeting dates in the next month. But um, unless anyone objects to that process, that's how I'd like to take this item just to get everyone level set on where we're at. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Jeff? Okay. So I appreciate that approach because I think most of you, almost I think maybe all of you will be seeing this for the first time and some of these decisions you may want to think about. Some of them be hopefully straight, more straightforward, but some you may want to think about. So I don't want to pressure anybody to make a decision today on anything. Um, I want to to touch on Jason's point, I, w I do want to clarify the site stuff, but before we leave the budget overview sheet that um, Vertex did, John and I discussed this point. It was after he had already sort of baked the cake here. Um, but there's one thing you'll see coming up in our VE sheets later on. We are actually identifying the 200K in the security system line item um, in the VE. What ended up happening is, um, the way it was carried was in the contractor's bid on, in his price, the estimate. 
uh, for that whole system. And so the 150 we had in our budget was for a much smaller piece of work that needed to happen. And the rest of it would be bought out by the GC and the electrical contractor. That was in the estimate. And so part of our VE exercise was to pull that out and put that into the soft costs. And of course, that created a budget um, overflow on that line item. And in order to reconcile that, we've reconciled it back in the VE so we're not counting it. Um, against the budget, it'll be counted against the potential savings of the E changes. So just to point it out, you'll see that come up later, and hopefully that makes more sense when you see it later as to why we've done it, but I think mean, you can rest easy that that line item on the budget actually isn't over the original, uh, or will be able to be adjusted by taking money out of the construction cost to cover it. And that's going to become clearer later, what you just said? Absolutely. Okay, thank you. <laughs> the point I just, I'm trying to make is just don't worry about it, we're covering it later. Okay. okay, we did pass out another sheet. I think Ellen passed it out. It's uh, labeled, um, <clears throat> the, the subject is labeled Comparison of Schematic Design, Design Development, Syllable Cost Estimates. Uh, it's a one sheet page, um, just a simple list. So in the Schematic Design, we had a budget of approximately 1.4 million um, in the DD cost estimate. It, it was 2.7, obviously that's quite a gap. Uh, the gap is approximately 1.2, 1.3 million dollars. So the counting here is a list of everything that's changed since schematic design and design development. I'll go through each item. So uh, when we did the survey, which we didn't have for schematic design, um, we found two particularly important pieces of information. One, um, and the survey includes of, of the geotech work, one was the, there was ledge in a corner of the site that we had to remove. And the other one was because of some of poor soils on the site, we had to move about three feet of soil over the entire building pad um, of the building. And those two first line items represent the costs involved to do that piece of work. So that's essentially just sunk cost on the site. The next one is a request to prep a concrete pad for a future storage building on the site, which was not part of the original um, cost estimate. Certainly can do it, uh, added about 10K in terms of all the prep work, concrete, everything all told. Um, it could be listed as an alternate package. It, it, it could be treated different ways. Um, then there was a mechanical enclosure. The original cost estimate didn't include any money for enclosing any mechanical equipment. They just assumed they would be out on a pad. Um, and in this case, we did want them to be enclosed, so that adds 26,000. Uh, there, there is a retaining wall um, that is, uh, Ellen, is this the golf course wall or just, yeah, this, this wall is due to the golf course um, item and uh, it, it, technically it could be included in one of the later items here, but we, we pulled it out. But the retaining wall is essentially because of the parking lot and the golf course area in order to make the site grading work. For a parking lot up there, we had to add a retaining wall, and that cost was 14K. It's not a big wall, but it's still a long wall. Uh, in the original schematic design, the carports were not um, included in the site costs. So um, that's the biggest piece of this. That's almost 360K. Excuse me, why weren't they included? They, were, they just weren't. Either, either they didn't pick it up off the plans, or they just weren't aware that there was uh, carports going to be put in when we had asked them to do the, uh, this was, the, sorry, this, this cost estimate was done by the civil engineer, not the cost estimator, and this most recent cost estimate was done by the cost estimator who took a detailed takeoff. So there are certain things where the civil engineer didn't anticipate items and it was just not picked up in the original estimate. So this is a failure by the civil engineer then? Well, I would say that it's, um, yeah, certainly a mistake not to include it. Um, I wouldn't put it on any one entity. You can call it design team. You know, it, right. it was, it was, an, it was a, an omission by the design team here, but. Um, but the carports have always been contemplated? They weren't from the very beginning, but they were put in in the prior phase, schematic design phase. So technically speaking, they probably should have been in that construction cost. And I think the, we anticipated that they were. We just didn't f figure it out until now. Um, that they actually weren't carried in that cost originally. When we did the schematic design, it was a um, much more high level cost estimate for the site, site pieces, so it wasn't as detailed as this 
broken down in the detail here. So there, there, we just didn't realize it wasn't in the estimate at the time. So if I can, just the, the reason I asked the question now is that um, you know, we haven't even put the shovel into the ground yet, and we're already talking about um, costs over the budget. Um, and this type of mistake, this $355,000 mistake, although you don't want to call it a mistake, I, I'm, I'm going to call it a mistake because I think it was a mistake. Um, we asked town meeting for a certain amount of money to approve this project, and they approved it based upon the amount that we asked for. Sure. So I just want to make sure, and, and maybe somewhat in a pointed way, that moving forward, we need to keep that in the front view mirror, so to speak, in terms of, listen, this is what we asked for, and this is what we need to deliver on, because had we asked for more than that amount, who knows if it would have been approved. Sure, understood, so, so. and I, that's part of this exercise because we yeah. understand where the budget is, and um, and regardless of what was or wasn't in previously, we have a number now that we have to stick to, and the question will become how do we get to that number and what sorts of yeah. things do we have to do to get there. So um, I'm just trying to let everybody and understand how we got from point A to point B. Yeah, and I, and listen, I'm not, I'm not um, aiming at you, or at least not right now. Um, <laughs> but I do think we need to keep this on the front burner. And Jason, I apologize for bringing this up halfway through this sheet, but I, I just wanted to make sure I made this point moving forward. That, and whether the committee feels this way or not, I don't know, but I certainly feel this way as, as one of the uh, prime or proponents of this plan at town meeting. I spoke on it, and I, we asked for a certain amount, and like I said, we haven't even started yet, and we're already over budget. Yeah, there is also a project contingency, a pretty healthy contingency, and, which, yeah. we, which we use primarily to uh, capture things that, um, for, for three various reasons, one of which happens during construction, and but one of which happens during potential, essentially the design phase. Um, and the good thing is that we're we are picking up, in as we get more and more details, we're picking up anything that may have been overlooked in any prior element. Um, and this particular budget that we put together, a schematic design estimate, is incredibly detailed to the point that I, that I feel I'm very confident that we're, we're seeing everything that's there. Mm -hmm. um, and we're, we're certainly not, we're certainly seeing anything that's at that dollar value, um, which is quite high. But we're seeing even some of the smaller things as well, where they either exist or don't exist in the project. And it also gives us, at this point in time, the ability to talk about them as to whether or not they're desired. You know, For instance, we go into a lot of the materials that are going to be used on the building and talk about costs specifically as to whether or not that's the dollar value you feel comfortable spending on that piece of the building or not. Yeah, but on the other side of the spectrum, I don't want to have to start compromising on uh, designs that are needed by the department in order to make up for errors on cost overruns. Yeah, I don't. I, I guess I look at it like um, this is essentially the cost of what it costs, and if I had included it in the prior version, as you as you said, we don't know what would have happened. So, right. You know, I, I think w the way I look at it is we have a number now, mm -hmm. and the number is where we need to be, and how do we collectively get there? So. Yeah. I'll get off my soapbox then on that. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, next few items here, there is a pump chamber which um, <clears throat> was sort of estimated to be smaller, um, ends up being priced larger. In fact, it turns out it probably can be smaller, so you'll see that show up as a VE savings as well later on. Um, we anticipated connecting the water main to the closest point in the building, um, or at least a reasonably close point, and in fact now where we're connecting the water main is at the back of the building, so we have to spend more money to bring the water around the building. Um, so that's in there. Um, electric and gas duct banks, uh, again, just like the, retain the carport item not included in that civil item, I think the civil engineer assumed they were part of line items being carried by the cost estimator, and it just it missed both estimates, so it didn't get picked up. 
Uh, and then the, re the, the final item in that category is golf course improvements, which are all of the things for specifically related to the golf course um, items. And can you be specific? Yeah, can you? So it's the, the, um, it's the cost of moving the house, the foundations, the grading, utility connections, parking lot, um, grading, and, and all the stuff related to parking lot and, and the driveway going up to the golf course, golf, golf house. So if that's the case, then what's the 363 that Jason has um, had to? That is a breakout in that budget. That's actually included in our cost estimate. So it's basically, a, it's a breakout. so what I did with the two, if you look at the front page of the AM Fogarty estimate, it's 290 before the markups. I added the markups to it. The markups down below, general conditions, all of those things. And that's how I got it up to 363. So the 319 is part of the 363? Correct. Yes. Okay. So, so we're just breaking it out of saying, you know, this cost was escalating um, the original assumptions about what was going to happen <coughs> there um, to what they are now. So, Jeff, I apologize for this is the accountant in me, but on page one of Vertex's summary, They've, they're carrying site work now at $3.5 million as compared to 1.4 in our town meeting budget. Um, you start on your page at the 1.4 for town meeting, but then you're only comparing it to 2.7. My understanding is that the 3.5 doesn't include the 363 at the bottom of the page. So I'm trying to find a million dollars somewhere here. I did this without him. So I need you two to, to yeah. sync this so together basically, for... Basically what, so if you look at the, the sheet we did, items one, two, and three equate back to the, you know, obviously the whole first column of original budget is your original budget. Items one, two, and three is what we're talking about here. The site construction cost, the building construction cost, and then escalation that applies to those two. Escalation in the original SD estimate was at 4%. So I put the 4% onto those three numbers. Those three numbers calculate to 16, 296, 800. Okay, when I go back to um, A.M. Fogarty's estimate, okay, basically we've got a front page here that has the golf broken out. It has the original public, it has the original construction number of 14, 219, and then it adds all the markups. So I had to go, went through and added the general conditions, the overhead and profit, the bonds, the design contingency, the escalation, to, to, so that we're comparing an apple to an apple. That's why I think our numbers aren't matching. <laughs> our numbers aren't matching because Jeff is taking individual line items out of the estimate before the markups are added, okay? Everything, and this is your total budget, so this has to have all the markups in it. Yeah, in other okay. words, if we added all the markups to my line items and then put the correct final total, you'd still get to that okay. where, where John I don't think heading. you can go from 2.7 to 3.5 with just markups. Hmm. Like There's, I think, 21%. Does the 3.5 include the 3 or? The 3.7 includes the 3.19, um, so, and the 3.5 doesn't, because it's down below. So the site items, Jeff, are. And, yeah, I mean, I did a direct calculation based on the site items that were in Pete's budget. Um, and that's what's on my sheet is just just the direct cost. So how much would you gross the 2.7 up by? Um, let's see, the front adds up to I think a little about 21 percent front sheet. 21 percent markup? I think that's what it is. My computer's not playing nice, but one second. And what makes up the 21 percent? Uh, a whole range of items, overhead and profit, um, can, uh, escalation. Um, i trying to remember that. It gets me to 3.2. What's that? It gets me to 3.2 if I use 21%. Okay. Jason, the 363 is not including the 3.5. That's, uh, that's what I need John to. Can okay, so just let's just break this out. So the earth, there were numerous categories in AM Fogarty's estimate, okay? 
There was an earthwork category for 486,000, a site prep and demolition, demolition category for 204,000, a site improvement category for 1.1 million, and a civil and mechanical electrical utilities uh, line for 1.01 million. If you add all those together, that's $2.7 million worth of site-related work. If you put the GC markups on it, it's about 20 something percent. That's 702,000. That totals the 3.5 that I carried on that spreadsheet. <clears throat> okay, so what's, basically it's all of these sections mm -hmm. that I went, because trying to compare the apple to the apple, yep. site, anything that's not in the building to me is site. So that's why, that's where the 3.5 comes from. Mm -hmm. So John, Yes. Does that include the golf course nope. items? Nope. Golf is separate. So I guess so it is that's here. not a breakup. Well, say it's here, but not here. Excuse me? So it's here. There's the 319. So if this all totals um, 1.22 right here, and I can't, I haven't added it up to see if that's 1.22, right? But I assume that's what you're trying to say. You guys are trying to explain 1.22, correct? Currently, that's what I was trying to explain. That's what this that all explains? Correct. I assume this adds up to 1.22? Yes, it, okay. it's a bottom, there's a total there. Which is, this was the problem with coming to you with something that is still in process. But you see our point, oh, I the 319 is in that, but it's not in your 3.5, right. you're down below. You're down below. So I there's still, and I thought that the markups were 12%, not 20%. I thought we had seven, five, what else? <clears throat> oh no, it's, it's well more than that, it's seven and five. It's seven for general conditions, five for overhead and profit, two and a quarter for bonds and insurance, five for design contingency, okay. and three okay. and a half for escalation. There you go. And it's cumulative. It's a, the way A.M. Fogarty does it is they take the markup and then the next line takes the total of the subtotal plus the markup and then they, they compound it. So our estimator doesn't. Okay. All right, so Understand through that. that process, at least up here, You've now explained to me the 2.7, but what I don't necessarily think we've done is explain the 1.22, because in the 2.7, the golf course stuff is not in that 2.7, if I listen to what John just said. Okay. Um, if you want, if you want to I'm come just back going to by, us on that. I yeah, just, I'm just going by what I saw in the site work section of the estimate, because, let me see, John, I. I think in Pete's estimate, he doesn't break it out. So Pete, did he, yeah, did he, he break it out? He's got a golf, he broke it golf out. course yeah. relocation okay. in the back. And I think you're $600,000 no, off between I, the two. I see, I, yeah, no, you're right, Jason. There's a, there's a missing $300,000 in there. Um, because that's, that's, not, that's not in that golf course thing. I, I thought Pete had it in, he had had it in before, I think, but then this last estimate, it, it broke it out completely. So. I think you're missing 600. If we got up to 3.2 by taking the 2.7 and putting the 20% markups, right? Yeah, 3.2. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now you're 300 off, but the three, you still got the 300 down here too. So I think you're 663 off between the two. Well, if we, I'm just talking about what Jason asked, which is how do we come up with a 1.2, the difference between DD and SD <coughs> in, in my numbers. Right. Um, and that I think is true. There's a missing 300K that I can't identify yet. Okay, um, so we absolutely need that, but I think, Kathy, I agree with your point. I think this may have to do with how they're and that, translating I don't think, the escalation I don't think we can in here. figure that out at the table here tonight. I, I understand that. <laughs> so you, that, that's your follow-up that I think um, you can certainly send correspondence to the committee once you have it. We sure. obviously can't ask questions about it until our next public meeting, but there's nothing that says you can't. Would, I think what would be helpful is for the next round of this, we have the items, we have the costs. So if you want to find them, you can look at look them up, and then put a mark, a few markup columns so that you can uh -huh. see. Here's what the line item cost is. Here's what the ultimate cost would be. The savings would be if you didn't do this item. Uh -huh. because, you know, I've got 700 grand in markups. Just I mean, what we site. want is there's a spreadsheet that goes from a million four. It's not a million four eight either, Jeff. It's a million four to three five two eight eight seventy eight. But either put the um, building move moving in there or not it's in one it's not in the other um, and explain it that way just go from one to the other so we just spent about 20 minutes talking about the differences between each of your sheets perhaps moving forward y'all can just present one sheet to us so that you're in agreement and we don't you know there's 20 minutes now we have to make up somewhere else so 
that's, I think, one of the fundamental lessons learned here. Um, so, Jeff, I know we've kind of sent you a few different directions on this sheet, but I guess I think what I'm hearing the committee ask for is a more detailed explanation of how we got from 1.4 to 3.5 in harmony between a vertex logo and a context logo. I don't care whose logo is on it. Um, just as a better explanation, because sure. I think yep. if I were sitting up here and I were a board of selectmen, I would say, well, how is your estimate so far off? And I think we've heard some explanations, some more valid than others. Um, <coughs> and we haven't even touched on the golf course piece of this, and I'm going to keep that until we get through the public safety piece of that, because I think that's just a broader conversation that needs to be raised um, that I know there's going to be some strong opinions on um, at the table, but I think we need something very quickly that just summarizes, because it's numbers, it's math. Yep. Um, I think you know where the issues are at this point. So if any, unless anyone has any further points on that specific piece, I think it would be helpful to go to um, what you've put in front of us related to value engineering yep. um, <clears throat> to talk through... <clears throat> how you kind of whittle this number down. Okay. So basically the sheet says we need to find $1.5 million <clears throat> in savings. Does that match your numbers, John? One, one, four, five without golf. So close enough. approximately $1.5 million. So what this sheet does was attempt to find areas where we felt there were potential savings to had to have had taken. These are not things that everybody is going to unanimously, easily, quickly decide they want to do because uh, VE is never easy, unanimous, and, and fun things to do, um, but it is pretty much a necessary part of every project <clears throat> because we do have to meet the budget. So um, the list adds up to 1.6 million currently. So there's you know, there might be some additional things we can come up with later, um, but essentially these are the items we have to pick from tonight. There may be some things in these decisions too that could be considered as alternates as well. That's exactly what bid I was going to say. Without, bid, these <coughs> bid without them, and then add it back in on bid day by add alternate if so, the money's available. So before we go down this list, can you just explain, and I think you've explained this in one of our meetings before, sure the pros and cons of doing an ad alternate? Because I think it's very easy for us to say, yeah, push this <coughs> off, and if we have money, let's do it. Sure. But I think you've explained that there is some so tangential use, risk. Use the canopies as an example. It's a big one. It's <laughs> very tangible. Um, basically, you would bid the job without them, <coughs> but the drawings would make arrangements, would show them, and it would label them as alternate one. Yeah, we'd, we'd fully detail them just like they were part of their main the rest of the process. So the bids come in on bid day, and the low bidder number one is $15 million, and he's got an alternate for, num for to put the carports in of $350,000. Well, 15 plus 350 is 15,350. Guess what? We're, we're, you know, we're under budget because our budget for construction is 16,3. Okay, we can put those <coughs> in. So you decide right there on bid day before you execute the contract, do you want to exercise the alternate? Um, different contractors will have slightly different prices for these things. The difficulty comes in if you have a second alternate. Okay, once you put an alternate in and call it your first choice, you have to take it in order to get to the second one. So let's say the second, the second one was, well, let's find another one here. Uh, change precast to CMU except at window sills. Um, so <coughs> We're going to put CMU in for the windows as kind of a base bid, and if we have the money, we're going to upgrade it to precast. Okay, that's a hundred thousand dollars. Well, on bid day, the bids come in. You've decided that your um, carports are more important than your your precast. You can't get cold feet then and say oh, I'm going to take alternate number two at a hundred thousand dollars and forget number one. The state requires that you take them in order. So basically, that ranking of which alternate is more important to you has to be decided before the bid documents are issued. So that if you, you know, we've had some jobs with six different alternates. Can't get to number six without buying one through five. Can also do alternates as a deduct.
take something away. The problem is, is that as you, anybody that's built anything knows, you don't get the full value of the dollar on a deduct, okay? And that goes for alternates as well. So we're more, more a fan of adding something into the job as opposed to taking something out on bid day because you'll never get, you won't get a dollar for dollar deduction. Whereas you might get a less than a dollar cost to add it for somebody who wants to be aggressive on their bid. So if you have six alternates, you're gonna have six bids? No, you're gonna have, so contractor ABC comes in and says my base bid number is 15 million. My prices for the alternates are as follows. One, two, three, four, five, six, they list them out. When we're done and we're all huddling up after to see what the bid results are, we will do a bid tab that's base bid, base plus one, base, base plus one and two, base plus one and three, one, two, three, base plus one through four, all the way down to one through six, because the winner of the job may change depending on how much they bid for those alternates. We've had people zero out smaller alternates before, drives other bidders crazy, because you know they were behind in second place, and you take that next bid alternate, they, you know, the places jump. It's just, it's just games with math at that point. But it's important because something as complicated as like the carports, mm -hmm would have a lot of filed sub-bid work. You'd have steel, you'd have electrical, you'd have concrete, you'd have a lot of different things in that that the sub-bidders would have to bid as well. So if there's alternates, the sub-bidders bid them along, right along with the GC bids. Jeroni? Yeah, so, you know, I don't want to think that every time I cross, I'm going to be critical. Um, Just for purposes of my understanding here, um, this document was created because of the concern about being over budget, and it lists a number of potential savings. Is there a way, Jason, that moving forward, you could come back to us with, rather than just regurgitating a list, you give us your recommendation, along with the recommendation that has already consulted with the chiefs. So, for instance, we don't have to talk about reducing the mirrors at the fitness uh, uh, facility and saving $4,000. I mean, if it's a recommendation that you're making and the chiefs are comfortable with, well, it's it, gonna it, shorten this process a little bit. No, absolutely, but understand too, we're sitting here not wanting to touch that contingency, and we don't know how much we need to save and get that number down. If we need to get that number down to, overage down to zero, the recommendation is you're gonna have to do everything on these sheets, period. If the recommendation is, well, we're okay taking some money out of the contingency, how much? We haven't had these discussions yet, so. Well, I thought we did. I thought the objective was at one of our early meetings that we want to try to bring this in as close to, if not under budget. That was the objective. Now, maybe that's unrealistic. Do you call the budget with the contingency or without the contingency? Uh, without the contingency. Yeah, because I, 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 agree, with, include, right? I, agree, I agree with them. I don't want to, I, I, well, I, I, I wouldn't, like that. I don't, as your OPM, I would not be a huge proponent of spending your contingency before right. we even bid the job. Right, that's why. Maybe so a piece of it, maybe a piece of it. Yeah. But, but it also depends on the items we're talking about too, right. as well. And some of these are more significant in terms of the project yeah. scope. So it wouldn't be necessarily a great idea to just say, that's where we're drawing the line right. and give us everything we right. need to to get I, to that I line because there has to be a discussion. Right. Don't, lose the, don't lose my second point. I think it would be important to me, and I don't know if the committee agrees, that you come to us with, listen, we've talked to the chiefs about omitting the canopy park structures. They're on board with that. That would be our recommendation. Rather than have to go through a discourse, okay, what, what do you so think about it? Chief, what do you think about it? At least it would be helpful for me. No, we have that type listen, of recommendation. We, we totally understand. The reality is, is these re estimates were reconciled on Thursday. Okay. Our rough list was put together on Friday, and we were handed this, and myself included, when we got here today. So this is just, we have a tight timeline I understand. at the end. So we wanted to get this into your hands. I don't think we expected there to be any real decisions made on this, these three pages tonight. Yes, there needs to be decisions with the chief. They're seeing this for the, some of these things for the first time. So there's more work that needs to be done, but this, but I think context did this to give you an idea of this is the kind of thing sure. we need to talk about Absolutely. if we need to get $1.6 million down. And don't, you know, that first item there, space changes, that's taking 2,000 square feet out of the building. Okay, that's, that's it's a tiny little line. It kind of means a lot. Sure. So those are the kind of things we're talking about. So if we <coughs> don't do some of those things, and it doesn't mean we won't come up with a few more, 
but if we don't do them, where's the money come from? It can only come from that contingency because you've you voted your money, you've voted your money already, and now we have to work backwards. But I just hope uh, I'm clear is that that item would not even be presented to us if the chief said, "Hey, that's 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 a deal breaker. We can't. We need that 2,000." So that would not even be a recommendation. Yeah, if we if, if we probably had an extra day or two, that's probably what we have done. Okay. It's just meet informally with, you know, staff, and then go through the list, figure out what things they were comfortable with, sure, and then just say, you know, chiefs accepted. Right. total of value engineering <coughs> changes Absolutely. X number of dollars Absolutely. and then deal with the remaining items that would but uh, John I, th I think it's important for transparency of the project that we at least be presented with a full out list right. that is uh, <coughs> proposed by our designers and while I have the utmost faith in both chiefs and their departments we unfortunately are gonna have to make a tough decision somewhere along the way that may not be um, you know the the right decision in the <coughs> chief's mind. And unfortunately, I think that's part of what we all signed up for when we were appointed. So I think we need to keep these lists. What I would like to do to focus the conversation is um, do a few things. Um, one, realizing the chiefs have not had a time, chance to react to this. I do think it makes sense to go through any item that you that is over $100,000, just walk through I'll why you're that. why you're proposing to eliminate it and let the public know that there's many smaller items that will be vetted with the chiefs before our next meeting um and that if we chose to accept it we're right back to where we want to be so there's absolutely no panic buttons to be hit here and, and i think there is some reconciling that continues to need to be done before you do that i just have one fundamental question because we keep saying that this sheet says we're saved 1.6 million However, we said we need 1.454 million without golf. This sheet includes golf. So, <coughs> I, and I'm really trying not to get into the golf conversation because I want to do that at the end and focus on public safety. But I really think we're talking about 1.3 versus 1.4. If we were to just say, yep, accept all these. We don't care what the chiefs say, we're done, right? So we're still, so am I, Understood. Keep Do golf. I, am I correct Keep in that assessment? We're going to call golf out of everything okay. moving yep. forward. All right. Jason, so, um, but I think there's one more thing we got to do first before we truly start looking at this. What Mr. Mooney said a minute ago was news to me, although very pleasant news. Every time I've talked about this, which was what was presented at town meeting, right? Mm -hmm. And I've said, I really hope we don't spend that contingency. I've gotten, well, good luck. Um, so everyone I've talked to seems to think that if we spend $27 million, which is the 4.5 for the land swap, which we know is different now, but keep it at what the town meeting was told, right, and this number, that we've done our job, okay? Um, so it sounds like maybe there's been a conversation that maybe for us on the committee where we think that our job is to bring this in at the 22.629500 less the contingency. And it's really important because, um, as we know, we've got a different number for the land swap now, um, and that's got to be paid for out of something, and I think it should come out of this overall budget and not whatever someone's come up with. So are we starting with 22629500? Are we starting with 22629500 less 2 million fifty-eight? The direction that I have given is that we should minimize and try to keep that construction contingency as zero utilized per our cost estimates, right? So that's why it is presented this way so that we get to a point where when we go out to bid, our expectation is that the bids will come in and we are not using any of our contingency. The contingency would be used for any, unevent, uh, any unexpected events during construction and hopefully just turn back to the town or use to offset other items outside of the purview of this committee. That, that's my goal. Whether, I'm pretty dead set on getting there. Obviously, we have a lot of work to do to get there, but that's how I want to frame it up to the, the Board of Selectmen, is that we don't plan to use the 22.6. We know it's there, but we're not pretending like it's there. We're trying to use 22.6 less the contingency 
that was presented at town meeting. And right, that was the big stickler, right? I was the brunt of a lot of those questions um, in terms of why do you need such a high contingency? I think we were absolutely smart for doing it because it helps these conversations, right? Imagine if we didn't have a contingency at all what this conversation would be like, but I agree, it's not worth trying to use it at this point. And I think our consultants clearly have that message based on some of their comments tonight. Um, Mr. Litt's been standing for a while, so I don't know if he had something to add before I let Jeff walk through the items over 100K. I don't mean to uh, be too intrusive, but there, there are two things that, that come to mind. Um, one is um, the way to look, the way I look at contingency is uh, against risk. So you don't want to use contingency money early. You want to use it late because that's when you have the least flexibility to uh, change things. Um, the second uh, observation um, that I'll make is that when you make lists of things that um, uh, you think you won't be able to do for, for whatever reason, um, you rarely uh, uh, want to take the full value of what that item is. So just to pick sort of the carport example, because it's an, an easy one to think about, um, if you look at something now and you say, well, you know, we really, really want to do this, um, but it looks like there's a, a financial cost, what you're likely to do is say, well, okay, so let's plan that we're going to put the footings in in case we're able to do it later. Or, you know, equivalent uh, things that come along in, in construction. So I think it's a little, I, th I think you want to be careful about assuming that if you have a line item that costs X, if you don't do it, you'll be able to subtract X. In reality, my guess is you'll, it'll be less than that for those kinds of reasons. Thank you. So, uh, Jeff, why don't I just ask you to very briefly summarize um, the items that you're proposing over 100K in savings, why you're proposing them. Um, you know, certainly if the chiefs have a off-the-cuff reaction, they're more than welcome to give it, but I think we owe everyone a little time to digest all of this and come back and make some decisions another night. But um, with these numbers in mind, do these include markups or are these just straight costs removed from? Straight costs. Straight costs. So the numbers theoretically. We don't have any markups, right? No markups. Theoretically would be higher for any of these items for all the markups. Yep. So my 1.3 that I threw out there, if you were to just remove all that and you gross it up by... 21 percent yeah well in excess right so why don't you walk us through the major items and then what i'll ask is let him walk through all of them then we'll take questions from the committee just so you can keep a constant stream of conscience okay <clears throat> first two items um unfortunately hot off the presses here the sally port and apparatus garage square footages were reversed but it's the same total um this would be the elimination of one bay, or at least making it an alternate um, to build out an entire bay of the garage, and turning the Salaport garage into a smaller garage just for one vehicle rather than two vehicles to sit in there. It's about a little less than 2,000 square feet, and based upon um, the cost estimator's opinion of what savings we would achieve on a cost per square foot basis for those items, because they're unfinished spaces, they're less value than a full square foot on the building, it's $342,000. Uh, that's number one. Number two is the carport structures we already talked about, I think, enough. Um, number three is a series of revisions to the site work, which we think are all uh, either eminently doable or very reasonable, so I don't see any reason not to do that. Um, number three is the driveway. Um, I mentioned that, we looked at that already, that's 35K, it's un under 100, but I didn't want to mention anyways. Um, this next one is specifically the one I mentioned about on the, on the um, cover sheet. And this is the security and ca camera and card access system in the construction cost, you can see on page two, we, um, we sort of detailed what's coming in and what's coming out. So we're taking out, um, the, uh, sorry, it should say $350,000 worth of security card access and devices from the cost estimate, which is the, we told the 
general contractor to buy all that stuff and install it in the building. What we're doing is now saying we're going to go out to a state contract and have a vendor provide those items, which is in fact the current plan. Um, unfortunately, that comes out of the soft cost budget, the owner's cost, which only has $150,000 in it. So the three hundred and fifty that we're saving on, on the construction side is offset against the $200,000 shortfall we had in the owner's budget. So that's um, that math there. So we end up with only $150,000 worth of actual true savings to the project. Um, if that makes sense, I can go through it again if people didn't follow it. But we had three fifty dollars coming out on the contractor's side, um, offset against a $200,000 shortfall on the owner's side. So we only get one hundred and fifty dollars that we can keep. Does that make sense? I know I'm violating my own rule by asking a question, but I feel like we have to nail this I mean, one now. Yeah, I, I, want, um, I want to make sure everybody understands So it. if that was the only change that the committee decided to make, yep. and you're telling me that the construction for the building would go down by $350,000 the next time we see this sheet, because John has already included 200000 up above, or are you saying that savings is already in this 14.2? Hold on, I have to discuss this with Alan. <laughs> She's shaking her head. <laughs> Jason, um, I'm going to revise that statement. Um, it's essentially zero at this point. Just there, there's a zero cost add or deduct at this point in terms so of. So we should ignore this. Whole Ignore the 150. It doesn't. But exist. what do we do with the 200 on the other sheet? Uh, it, no, I'm saying that you know we are going to. It, we just don't have enough in the construction budget to to overcome the shortfall in the in the. Um, well, we have just enough to overcome exactly what the shortfall is in the on the owner soft cost in the construction budget. So we're essentially swapping it. Um, it's so it's not a savings. It's no savings. It's zero. It's it's a zero it's add struck zero. Struck from this list altogether. Be struck from the list altogether. Yeah. But it's still 350 at our DD budget. Yeah, un today. unfortunately, um, that number was erroneous, and it's it's less than 350. But um, the the 350 Three. will exist in the owner's budget, and in terms of the total total budget for this item, but it won't be any any savings on the project. All right. So do I dare ask why this was listed as potential savings for 150? Do I just this? Let's keep moving. It it was it's a mistake. It shouldn't have been there. Okay. Um, so now we're down to yes, that comes out of your total. But I think the takeaway here is that the point on the, I'm trying to make it is the owner's budget, that $200,000 shortfall does not exist. That, it, that there will be, we can transfer the money out of the, essentially so the construction zero, cost. You're, you're moving it from above to? The net is zero. Separate. Net okay. is zero. There is, there is a savings, but it's, it's essentially a not, not a project savings is what I'm trying to say. Not it's all a, saving on the construction costs, but not a project savings. To all it. right. So John will not have a variance yep. next time, yep. essentially. That's, that's what I'm trying all to right. say. Moving on. Um, Next time that we get to something that's significant is, John mentioned already, is a change to the precast. Um, we had planned on using precast materials, uh, and we could go to a concrete block unit, ground face, or something like that. Um, it was essentially similar product, a um, little bit more rough looking, and it'll have more joints in it, except at the window sills, because we don't want joints in the window sills to show up and be, um, uh, um, access for water points to get into. So that's $100,000 savings to make that change around the entire building. Um, the next one that is high enough, um, well, there isn't one. Uh, the rest of them are all sort of smaller items. Um, let me see if there's any on here that I think are worth talking about. Um, I guess on the site cost, it's only $19,000, but we could change half the granite curbing to precast, um, something that the town may want to weigh in on. I know, I'm pretty sure Karen's already weighed in on this, but she wants, what I've heard is that, you know, precast was going to break down faster or a lot faster than granite in terms of getting hit by plows and things like that. So it's, it's better to have granite, but it does have cost impact to it. Um, everything else is uh, 
not necess is um, is not not worth talking about. I guess at this point, it doesn't meet your threshold. Yeah. Yeah, I mentioned that just because we had talked about it before, and even though it was under 100, it, it's still listed here at 35K, switched to a single driveway. So those are the major items. Would you say, Jeff, that this is an exhaustive list between context and vertex, or you need? No, it's exhaustive between uh, context. Okay. I don't think. John has really gotten an opportunity. We gave him a, them a list last week that was probably a third the size of this, a quarter the size of this. So he, a lot of these items, they, they're seeing this for the first time. Um, we gave him a draft this morning that had most of this stuff on it, but you know, it's one day. I, I, there's some more time that needs to happen so that we can all come together on the items. I will say that most of these are not unusual items to talk about in this sort of scenario. It, it has to do with what's our expectation for level of finish, materials that we're using in the building, um, and how much scope are we buying for some of these things. And so we've made, and why the DD estimate um, had a lot of these things in is we made assumptions about what the town and the chiefs and everybody would want to have in the building based upon our conversations, upon conversations with the working group and the chiefs and these assumptions now need to be tested against the budget to make sure that they are in fact worthy of the project and each, each one probably needs to be evaluated one by one. And in many other communities, they make different decisions about what they want. You'll make different decisions that other places will. So these aren't unusual things to see. So I guess before we go to next steps, maybe I'll just see, does the committee have any questions on any of the items that Jeff outlined tonight other than what do the chiefs think of some of the bigger ticket items can I ask a related question yeah okay so the million so John this is for you well it's for <coughs> both of you so a million four right that's so the first three million. are more than half that's of that that's 800,000 bucks right um, so based on your experience given that we know that within the two estimates <coughs> They've also got a 5% contingency, right, until they get to the next estimate, right? Mm -hmm. And given that your belief that these are middle of the road prices is not the highest, it's not the lowest, so the actual bid may come in a little bit lower, what do you think we really need to try to save so that in the end, we really do save a million four? So if we had a million, do you think we get to the million four with the contingency in the estimates going away on the next one, or mostly going away, and the actual low bid being used? problem with so <laughs> get your crystal ball out. nice job um, but I'm asking the problem is is trying to guess well, why we estimate to the middle of the road is because the price on bid day is about the conditions in the market on bid day and I'm leading up in round bid day and what's come out to bid in the weeks prior you know what's on people's plates what do they have um, so you know, I can come in here and tell you everywhere except Nantucket, we come in under, because you have to, you have to. There's a number and you have to do it. Um, but you can't come in over. You can't come in over, it's not an option. So that's the trick, you know, how close can you get without going over, it's a you know, so, crazy game show. And, you know, at least in terms of the cost estimating, it's not really truly even the middle of the road because what we're trying to hit is the middle of the sweet spot between the lowest kind of cluster of bidders because there might be a couple of wacky high guys in there that skew the numbers. So we want to kind of get that sweet spot. So we're, we're hoping to be not that high in terms of the estimates um, because we also want to give you accurate planning tools to be able to anticipate the bids. Now, that being said, I can tell you that talking to our cost estimator, He's seen a lot of a lot of volume in the market, and that's helping to drive costs up. And um, you know, I, I, when we were talking in the fall of 20, must have been 2016, um, to come up with the original budget estimate before we even got to the schematic design estimate. I asked him, fire station, you know, 128, 495 general area. 
what would you give me a cost per square foot? And at that time, it was 450. And I asked him the same question last week, and he's up about 515, 525 now. And just because of the, the construction market and where things are headed, um, does funny things. So you know, it'd kind of be not very appropriate to guess and then be completely off because the market shifted and we How couldn't give How much time passed between 450 and 515? I'd say about uh, 13, 14 months. And, you know, it, it, nobody expects it to jump like that. We would t t in that time period, I think we were planning somewhere around 5% escalation cost. So it certainly was well more than that, but it it's also represents the climate, as John was saying. It's, you know, the bidders, there's a lot of volume. They're expecting more volume to come out the beginning of this coming year. Um, so, you know, if not a lot of people are bidding, he's seeing you know, filed sub bids throw out numbers that are much higher than what, you know, they're trying to catch in terms of the estimate. So to a certain extent, I was surprised that the building costs that we estimated here were so close to the numbers we did in the previous budget. Um, and it, it was happily surprised, of course, but um, given what I've heard in the market. So I, I think we did a good job in that schematic design trying to predict where we would be today, but going forward, it's, that, it's challenging. And that's some of the other piece of the site number. So to ask Jeff what happened to the two million, there's a list of items. One of the answers may be it just costs more. You know, because remember, you got an SD estimate from the civil engineer. It wasn't very detailed, you know, of 1.4, and now it comes in today and you're at 3, you know, 3.5. We can identify the items that weren't in the SD estimate, but then there's a gap. And sometimes that gap is just it the numbers that are out there are just higher. But the so, building it didn't work out that way. No, but no, but it's two different trades. You know, the guys who run the yellow machines are not the guys that go vertical. You know, those are the guys that also can do highway work and bridge work and those other things that if they're seeing more and more volume in the marketplace, yeah, you want me? We'll cost Here's them. the price now. Or there's there's no, not many people out to do it, so you don't get any bids, so you know as a bidder going into it, you know, while ago, there, I would have been competing against 10 of my competitors, and now there's just two or three guys going after every job. So he knows he's a much better chance of getting it, so, so he can raise their prices. I, th I think the, the play here is just what where Jason was heading, is that you give us a little more time, come up with some more items. I mean, I do still think the right thing to do is to get as close to that 1-4 as possible, you know, and then Chief's input, and then your input. I mean, if the goal here is to not touch the contingency, it needs to be close to 1-4. And then, what are we doing with the golf? Where's that getting paid for? Is it being paid, I know we're gonna talk about that in a few minutes. Is it being paid for out of this job or not? And that's important because it takes away some of your flexibility to do some of those other things because, you know, there are some things in here, I see it all the time. I, you know, the little things bother me sometimes, you know, change solid surface cap countertops to laminate to save four grand. In four years when it's lifting and chipping off the edge because someone's, you know, holster nicks the edge of it every day, that, I, I hate that, you know, so, but that's the kind of stuff that we have to show you right now, the big all the way down to the little to try to, you know, come up with what, what's best. Um, so I would say let us go back and do that, and get a little further. We'll send you some stuff, Jason, to disseminate beforehand. You, you can disseminate it. Just okay. send it to the committee. Okay. I guess, is there anything that you're considering that would impact the plans that you've given to the planning board? The Other driveway. than the driveway. Yeah, that would be the only one is the driveway. And we've heard from the chiefs their view on the driveway, so unless the committee has some desire to force them to one driveway from a cost perspective, Think that's the reason it's on the list is just to make you make sure you understand the cost that's on the table by doing it the two driveway scheme the other piece about this too is as we get a little closer you know we're going to meet with the radio person on Monday we've got a line item in here for a tower if we don't need a tower guess what just found hundred and fifty thousand dollars that we can use on construction so similarly with the traffic signal you know what are we gonna end up with a traffic signal just a push button that's a hundred just did that for hundred twenty five thousand in situate 
there's a lot of other there's a lot of other construction monies there that maybe can move around, but we're just not close enough yet to be able to say, yeah, it's available. So, do we know anything about the cost of the gas and water extension at this point, Mr. Purple? Do you have anything more on that? So how long do you need for the exercise that you're proposing, which would include feedback from both chiefs and coming back with a new memo that includes everything top to bottom and literally maybe sort it by items okay with chiefs, items not okay with the chiefs? Okay. I would think we'd be able to by the end of the week. We could, I think we could coordinate the goal, by the I end think we would want to come back here next week. So we have planning. We have planning board next, right. next week Monday. at Monday. Some or all of us may be attending that. You already have to be here for that. Correct. So, um, does the committee have any interest in convening before that? We'd have to do it early. Um, I think it's the best use of everyone's time and allows us we'll to kind of get you the info before. Obviously, just so like you can commit to getting us something on Friday. Yeah, we have. Uh, I think we have to. Yeah. So given the time. So. Our consultants give us something on Friday. We digest it over the weekend, have a public meeting in advance of planning on Monday. Would that work? Yes. How long do you think we need? Well, we've got the radio meeting at 2. And planning's at what time? 7. We don't know if we're first on the agenda, but I, I would assume. So if we did. Six, I think, would be fine. I mean, because if you've seen it already, it's going to come down to what do you want? To do? Mm -hmm. <laughs> really, you know, the if there's any question, what I would say is the items on this aren't really going to change. If anybody has any qu technical questions about why or what, shoot them this way so that we can answer those questions. So that all we're really dealing with next Monday is cost. Do it, don't do it. But there may be new around. items. Added correct. To the list, correct. Right? Okay. correct. Yep. Yeah, yep. and there will certainly be a, a different format as you suggested, so we can focus on things more appropriately. All right. Does everyone agree with that approach? So 6 p.m. Yeah. next week will have to be done at 7 o'clock. So we'll use this room, and we'll just recess, let planning come in, and to the extent we still have a quorum, we'll stay. If not, then. They'll do their thing and we'll move along. Um, and you'll coordinate with the chiefs. Before we leave tonight. All right. Any co further comments, suggestions on that particular item? All right. So I think. It's yeah. Can I? Can I real quick? Just are there some on here, Jeff, that you guys can just accept that aren't? We can accept. Yeah. Uh, there are. It's what, the quality. What, what I'm going to do is when I re point. when I. We trigger this list. We're going to create a section that basically says, "Already baked in." You know, we're already doing this. Unless anybody has major objections to it, these are things we think are no-brainers. You don't really even need to tell us not to do it or or not. We're going to do it anyways, and it's just savings that will be added to the like, like the site utilities. Unless anyone really yeah. has a yeah. I mean, know, a lot of these things are even catch, things we've already talked feeling. about the planning board. <laughs> And their peer review are about doing, and they're on board with. So, you know, I, I think realistically, we don't need to waste your time talking about yeah. it. I, I think it's helpful. Yeah. So, I think we have two items before we leave this particular topic. Is one, I still think it's important to get the board of selectmen an update tomorrow night. My plan is to summarize this conversation with a firm objective that our goal remains to go out to bid with a cost estimate as close to the 22.6 less the contingency um, to start, and that's what we're working towards. There may be some tough decisions coming, and then provide them an update on the planning and conservation process. That's where I plan to leave the update unless anyone has any other items they'd like to include. And then I'll ask to come back maybe in two weeks or in four weeks to give them a number that actually ties to what they probably would be looking for. But I think it's important for them to know that we're thinking hard on some certain things. May, any objections to that piece? You, so what are you saying? You, you don't want to touch so the contingency Correct. on bid day. Correct. Right. And I, I think we could owe it to ourselves in the budget to use some now. 
knowing that we're closer to bid than we were yeah, I mean, a year and a half ago. To, to what you just said, using it on bid day is a different decision than using it now. Right. right. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, so I think if, like, we, if you, like if, if you're, you know, if we're at 16, six, 16 296 and your low bid 16.5, yeah, do you're the, doing the job. Uh, right. Yeah, because at that point you can't take 200,000 out of it and it's still going to leave you with a significant contingency. Right. That's different than taking three or 400 out of it now and encumbering it into the construction budget, you know, but I, I agree with you. Yeah, can we can we use some of that, you know, 10%, 20% number now, and then, yes, fingers crossed, we get to the end of construction, we still haven't spent 22.4, but we haven't, we've spent some of the 2 million. Well, I think what's gonna happen is, you're gonna be able to answer that question next week, because there may be some things that are non-starters for somebody, or, you know, You know the golf numbers in here right now you know take the golf number out you know one or two of those things you put back in you may have to we, have to, we may have to make it may have to have a discussion about that next week right. so yeah. to be continued i get a question about contingency that now that's generally for unanticipated yep. events now do you find in your experience that that's under the construction idea or more of the site or a little of both or like what how does that fall is it because i can, can see where you open opinion. up a site like it did and i mean didn't i didn't anticipate what you found i will tell you that the, i feel better and better about the contingency the more the building comes out of the ground once you dig the hole that's where the first big issues are going to be because no matter how many holes you drilled or test pits you did you're going to you if you're going to hit something you know it'll be there once the foundation is in the ground and the steel is is up and we're through any sort of coordination issues or you know I feel pretty good once the bill once the once the steel so is up the contingency would be generally for site construction then is what you're kind of saying I no no, no I didn't <laughs> say that I would say I feel better about the contingency you have in place once this building's out of the ground you know but typically you have a I mean you have a huge huge contingency it's great right I and I'm just say saying we built we in for this event. We typically say five percent. Would say five percent for new, ten percent for a Reno, um, Reno addition type project. So at five percent, you know, eight fifty. You know, on seventeen million, <coughs> sixteen million, you're at eight eight fifty. You've got two. So you've got. We we do have some flexibility. And although I can appreciate what you're trying to aim now, if this comes down to doing it or not, that becomes a different discussion later so to your point if there are a few things you want to take now with the goal that we still try to work and buy out tight and you know when it's when it's a non-construction item I think you, you you can consider that I mean everything's on the table right now um, well I mean but the first goal is to try to I mean this is significant things being pulled off the table and I think if the profes professionals told us to build a contingency because they knew things were going to happen and they did in fact happen and that's what it's there for then that's what we should be doing rather than you know giving away a lot the, of stuff the, fl here. the flip side of that though right now is if you took everything he had in this that would cut that contingency down to a half a million dollars that's not enough no i'm not saying everything but i mean yeah, this but is significant i'm sure the chiefs are not going to be happy about some of the oh listen the as i said to you a little while ago that, I wouldn't first, be. that first 350 that's changed to the operations of the building yeah, you know right. that's not uh, for me. That's low on the list as far as yeah. that's a, if you really have to do it. To your point, if there's one you're going to keep and buy right now, buy that one. That's yeah, it. that I mean, the list was in no means uh, an attempt to say these are all. Like I guess I said at the beginning, they're not easy things to do, and, and certainly some of them are much harder than others. And none of them. Do, well, I shouldn't say that. Most of them we don't necessarily recommend because we want the building to be as functional and as useful and as important for the town as possible. But that said, we know we've still got to meet that bottom line. And until you tell us differently, we hear feedback saying, this is a non-starter, got to have it. We're going we're gonna to show you all the options. All right, should we shift to golf? And I'm trying to keep this brief, but I realize it's a difficult coordination topic. So until now, we have been carrying golf below the line. If we would add in the golf costs that are coming out of this plan, 
we're adding approximately 363,000 million, million, 363, to our potential budget. Now, I'm going to leave a discussion of whether it's even part of our project off to the side, because I think this is something we need to pass along to the golf course committee to digest. But I guess before I open it up to the, the rest of the committee to discuss mm -hmm. is, do you two have an idea of what it would be to demo the golf clubhouse and do nothing? Just because I think that's the comparison is we were definitely carrying budget for demo in the 22.6. What is that number as compared to the 363? Uh, demo is not going to be a lot of money. 20. Less, maybe even 15. Yeah. 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 Is that John backing up his truck? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a it's a pretty easy building to demo. No, they I mean, did a building a like this for a day, around the corner of my containers. where I yeah. live, and they did it in one day. Okay. And then and then they took two days to clean up, but they knocked it down in one day and picked it up in two. Why did you assume you were going to demo it when you did the original budget? Because golf, go, we we were just trying to um, allow for the possibility of golf because we weren't bringing forward a proposal to the town of all-encompassing golf course operations, we were trying to leave the flexibility for golf to exist while the town digested everything that was in front of them. I agree with what Mr. Rooney has said many times. Main, one of the main reasons this probably passed is because of the golf course support in the neighborhood latching on to having a golf course continuing in their neighborhood. Um, but that, that's where we had to draw the line for purposes of public safety. It just doesn't seem consistent. I agree that exactly what the town is expecting. But it, so if you knew that, why wouldn't you have assumed you're moving the, someone's moving the clubhouse instead of demoing it? Because we can demo it and cheap, cheaper in our budget. We can okay, but so we're all taxpayers, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, so we can demo it in our budget and pay for it in the golf budget. And maybe it's the same, but maybe we're building a new one. It's, it was cost to do this project, I think, at the time. Demo being such a small dollar, you, procurement-wise, it's typically something you can get three quotes for and just do it, you know, not have to design it, put it out, all that sort of thing. Is moving the cost, or if, if let's just say they did something new, it's going to be more or less than the 363. They, if they tried to replicate this, but the put a golf new house itself. Um, there's a bunch of costs associated with it, and I'd have to study it to figure out exactly all the line items involved. But I think the move, what is the moving cost, like 40K? 35. Thir the move itself was 35. And then, you know, there's some associated costs because we have to build a foundation for it. We've got to tear down the porch that's there and a bunch of other stuff, and then construct those things in the new location. Um, so, some added costs to that, but it's probably less than $100,000, less than $100, I would think. So is it the told. site? Is it the site it includes, that's causing the issue? It, it also includes the the driveway and the parking lot in that number. That that everything associated with the golf is is in that 300k. The paving, the curbing, the walks, the gravel parking, those sort of things. That's like mm -hmm. 70, yeah. 70, 80 thousand mm -hmm. for just the site related stuff. Thirty five to move it, interior and exterior restoration. There's dollars in there for that of 60,000 the foundation wall 35,000 the insulation 14,000 so so Mr. Rooney I don't know if you have any thoughts on how best to coordinate this with the golf course committee there's clearly someone has to pay for this I think there's probably some judgments that would need to be made by town council on whether this could even fall within our budget um, if we could fit it, but any thoughts on how your committee was expecting the relocation to work? Did they just expect the building to appear in the new spot or how, how they were proceeding at least as of now and what message potentially we may need to get direction from the Board of Selectmen? Because that's kind of yeah, where I, I'm going with this one. I can tell you the sense of that committee is that they want to partner with this committee and with um, context as much as possible to uh, ride the coattails, if you will, for this construction project to accomplish as much as they can for their objective. Uh, the golf course committee has no money in terms of uh, being able to fund these things. 
and um, it is their uh, hope um, that if town council opines that that is part of this article, then they'd be able to uh, convince whomever it is that they need to convince that these costs should be incurred in order to relocate the clubhouse and to uh, ensure the continued operation of the golf course. That, that, that's pretty obvious that that's what their objective is. So I do think we need to find out, first of all, is it within the existing article, number one? If it's not, then I guess we'd have to ask town council, town administrator, and board of selectmen whether we submit a, a, a new article or a, a, an article to town meeting uh, to accomplish this movement, and it would have to be done really immediately insofar as when this construction is ongoing is when the clubhouse is going to have to be moved. So, But you'd have to do a special then because right. the annual would be effective July 1st. Exactly. And, and we've already done it at that point, so right. you can't you, ask them so, to pay for it. So I guess it all depends on what the opinion is as to the inclusion of this article. Mr. Purple, do you have, have you looked into that at all or have any thoughts on that? So pertaining to the clubhouse, excuse me, we've had conversations with Bond Council, um, and um, one of the, the issue is that the clubhouse is within the existing envelope of the new public safety facility. So it would be an incidental cost if that clubhouse were to be moved, but the, um, uh, you know, the, 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 the foundation and everything in that new, that new clubhouse could not be part of the costs that were allocated under Article 1. Because the clubhouse is within the envelope for the new public safety facility is the only reason it would be considered incidental because it has to be either moved or demolished in order for this project to move forward. So that is an incidental cost. But the, um, uh, the issue of, the, uh, of a foundation and things of that nature are not incidental costs. So there would be there would be you know something that would have to be done. Now on a temporary basis, there are things that you could do, um, you know, for because you don't really need you know a clubhouse. You know there are accommodations that probably could be made on a short-term basis, but either way, they're they're going to need some kind of funding source for that. So I would expect something to come from the golf co uh, golf course committee for some type of capital article for the spring. Uh, I would suggest, Mark, that the golf course committee would disagree with you in terms of they're not really needing a golf uh, clubhouse. They see it as an integral part of the overall operation of the golf course, both from a you know bathroom uh, facility purpose mm -hmm. as well as uh, you know people coming in and, and uh, conducting their, their golf related business and also the storage of the the golf carts, otherwise they're just going to be out in the open subject to the elements. Um, so well, I, I, but I, I, and I, and I agree with you, it's an integral piece of the operation. I'm not saying to do away with a clubhouse in entirety, but there, you know, can be a bridge plan, mm -hmm. you know, put together by people more knowledgeable about this issue than me um, as to, you know, how you get from, you know, um, you know, if, whether the clubhouse needs to be moved or whether it's going to end up being demolished and a new clubhouse constructed. You know, so the, there's got to be a bridge plan to get you from one to the other. And to be clear, you're saying that Bond Council has formally opined that all we can do is move it over and drop it down with no foundation. That's, that's all we can pay for. That's correct, because it, as I said, it's incidental. No, I get it, but I just want to make sure you that's formally correct. opined. Yes. Where the, this is not some informal. It's on tape. Okay. Yeah, so this is going to come as somewhat new information to the golf course committee because I think they were proceeding on and understanding that because it's within the building envelope, it could be relocated. And, of course, part of the relocation is you're going to need a foundation to put the building on. So I do believe that they had some sort of a, you know, causative relationship as to the foundation and the movement of the building. And I can tell you that from my attendance at those meetings as the liaison from this committee, they have not, they do not know or not aware of the ability just to pick it up, 
and put it down and then essentially the golf course uh, is on its own, mm. you know, so to speak, in terms of the supporting structures and the interior finishes. That, uh, so that's well, a discussion I, yeah, that needs I, I to be I think held. I think I've included Lou in my conversations okay. with Bond Council, so that you know, hopefully I was clear enough on that part. Yep. But you know, but if not, then you know, there's going to have to be some funding that's that's found so for that piece of it. Question, uh, Mark. I don't know if this is something you can answer hypothetically. If this movement of the golf course clubhouse is going to occur prior to securing funding at town meeting, how is that done, or can it be done? That's an OPM question. That's an OPM question as to if we're going to, if it needs to be relocated and we need to move it. Yeah, but but the movement of it isn't going to happen prior to town meeting. I mean, that would depend on on if we start to site you know site work early. It depends on. Yeah, because you're not. We're not looking at opening bids until April. April. Yeah. 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 So but, you're but not going to have a groundbreaking until likely. No, but even when when would town meeting be? Town meeting is the in April. second week in April. Okay, so the reality is the contractor gets on site. If successful, and there's money, that's great. The question becomes how, who's design? I guess, are you designing the entire, the, yeah. Are you designing the, like who's designing, there needs to be a bid package so that somebody, technically you would love so for somebody to. <coughs> we currently are designing mm -hmm. the foundation, yeah. the relocation, mm -hmm. the utility, the, uh, major utility connections, okay, not the When's that data. getting bid? Well, there was no decision on that. We assumed, maybe incorrectly or incorrectly, that we assumed we'd do it as part of yeah. everything else we're doing. Uh, so I think what you could do is you could have a bid ready for a town meeting. Mm -hmm. the, the one so that you have an actual number. And if the reality is, is that it didn't happen or got voted down, you could move the building and you could put it on cribbing. You know, you, right. you don't have to knock it down. You could, you could move it somewhere set it you know, down and set it down um, <coughs> but then you're paying for somebody to come and move it again so the price just went up but, but also if I can interrupt the septic issue I mean this the the intention is to for the clubhouse to share the septic system that is being designed for the public safety building so I mean you wouldn't want to do two separate system sep separate septic systems we, uh, could, we could do the connection without making the full connection to the building the 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 court so that getting a vote is important. There still, I think, needs to be discussion about the phasing and how it's represented in the documents, because obviously you want that done and out. Yeah, we need to it give away. the public safety building contractor, you know, full reign. Yeah, you don't want somebody saying, "I can't." He hasn't moved his house yet, so we'd have to make sure that those are, or we tie them together. And the so. the other important, I think, thing to remember is that sort of within the scope of our work is, is sort of the necessary services to get the building moved and connected and essentially functional to the point where it operates today, um, but not necessarily doing a lot more work to it. Um, you know, we're essentially hooking it back up so that the carts can be charged. But if there's any other additional scope that needs to happen, that's not part of the, part so, of the project. So we could, if if you wanted one contractor to control the whole thing, which is probably smarter, you could bid it, if you bid it as part of our work as an alternate, then it would have a clear, a clear price. Right. Um, I'd have to look into the procurement laws. You might not even have to bid it as an alternate. You could, on the bid form, call it out so that it, it's in there. Has its own. Has its own, yeah. has its own number, you know, part A and a part B bid. We have done that before. Then you're not messing with it all, the alternates of everything else that we may have to do mm -hmm. for the public safety building. Right. So you would, so we would just need to work the schedule backwards from when you need a number for town meeting. What's the latest possible time you can get that number? Because whatever, then the whole rest of the schedule behind it kind of changes so that we can make that timing work. Right. John, just one thing you just brought up in terms of the septic system. So the septic system was also something else that was discussed with Bond Council. 
and bond counsel again opined that you know there is one septic system because I believe and and hopefully you're going to shake your head um, is that thank you is that um, is, is that you know the one system based on the gallons required for the school public safety and and the clubhouse would fit within one existing system um, so that you know so that system is not is not the issue hooking in the system you know is going to be you know is going to be something so the system will be there and provided but it will have to um, there will be additional funding needed to hook the system into the new clubhouse so I, I want to try to move this a little bit but I guess mr. Rooney are you looking at revenue sources for the town because I'm just thinking right is it, if the golf course thinking of any ability to generate revenue that may be able to offset part of this right because I think I don't know just a personal view is if I saw revenue that may offset some of this cost that may be a more palatable message than just throwing more money out but getting nothing in return as like maybe a taxpayer that doesn't see the value or benefit of golf yeah I, to answer your question Jason I don't believe that analysis has it been undertaken in terms of what projected revenues will be on an annual basis and how that can offset the attendant costs of the construction uh, they have not done that yet okay. what they talked about at one meeting um, several meetings ago um, I don't think you were at that one um, the New England has a contract that's a basically a triple net lease they're paying all the expenses including the current real estate taxes mm -hmm. they're not gonna pay those anymore so they're gonna save that so I don't know if there's any way to somehow get them to fund this within their contract so the contract takes care of it but I'm still really surprised I'm not trying to beat you up on this that the bond council has concluded when you read that article and it's a, it basically says um, you know we're gonna keep the golf course open that they don't think that moving the clubhouse building the driveway so they've got a place to park their stuff is not within that article I'm just surprised the same bond council that said oh we can go back to this old um, debt offering and pay for the extra costs for the land I mean that makes no sense to me and this makes no sense to me so they have formally pined on this and understand and re obviously they've had to reread the article mm -hmm. understand and That's correct. I just don't see why yeah. it doesn't I'm looking at you as attorney you as an attorney yeah I, 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 hang on, hang on. Mr. Goodney mm -hmm. impatiently waiting so oh, yeah. it's is there any they're gonna have to do some excavation to move the holes around in the uh, tee offs is that correct yeah, that's more future issues. They're talking about putting temporary greens on one and nine, at least to get through the construction period. And then to the extent that there are costs associated with rebuilding greens, that would be future town meeting uh, uh, discussions. I mean, I just want to make sure we're all working together. I mean, we're going to pull up quite a bit of material out of there that's not good enough for construction, but might be good enough to plant grass on. Yeah, we're you know, if you need it. it's planned to be reused on site. We're yeah. not exporting anything off site. Okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure everybody's working together and not that was, that's know, been paying part to of get the rid discussion. of something that they're going to be paying to buy. Definitely been part of the discussion with the yeah. golf group. I have a question. Uh, yes. We've talked about moving the clubhouse, and the cost that I didn't hear addressed, and I may have missed it, is the driveways, the retaining walls. Are those covered within the article? Part of the 319. So that's all part of the 319. We keep talking about Clubhouse. It's all of it. That 319 includes that, too. So they don't have money for any of this. Clubhouse, so this parking lot, article. retaining wall. That's essentially the three big <coughs> items in there. Yep. And, and so you're saying those are not covered under the article. Is that what I'm hearing? That's what Mark is saying. Bond mm. Council is saying. Yeah, well, I, I can. OK. Yeah, I can tell you that the golf course committee, and just from my attendance at those meetings uh, would strongly urge whomever it needed to urge to include those costs within the article. Now, whether it's to convince the selectmen, to convince bond council, or whomever, because part of the overall package that town meeting passed and sold and it was presented is that we're building this public safety facility and not or, but and we're continuing the operation of the golf course. Right. So I, I, I tend to see those as both hitched together and uh, they would, I would suspect, I can't speak for them, Jason, but I suspect that that's the argument that they would make. And these have to be done like in March um, because yeah. you've got to have this done before you start building. So, um, Mr. Litt, did you have something? No, I 
I guess, as, as someone who attended town meeting and attended a bunch of the meetings going up to town meeting, um, what I heard, and I'm not involved in the golf course thing, and I'm not involved in the public safety thing, so I'm sort of, you know, I don't have any dog in this particular fight. But what I heard very clearly time and time again from the public safety uh, planning committee was that the budget didn't include anything for the golf course, that the goal was to make sure that the golf course could be activated and that um, people would be coming back to town meeting for whatever additional funding was required um, to make the golf course continue to work. That's what I heard. Now, that said, uh, being a sensible kind of person, obviously one doesn't want to be inefficient about this. If we're going to end up with a working golf course, it doesn't make sense you know, to park a building, let it deteriorate, then build a foundation, you know, then fix whatever deteriorated and all that. And what that says to me is that um, you, need a, you need money and you need a plan for doing the golf course work sooner rather than later. And if that means a special town meeting or if that means finding other available funds, then that should be a priority that the golf course people drive and that you uh, uh, help with. Uh, I don't think trying to slip it into uh, this budget is, is a good thing because there will be contingencies, there will be calls on that money, and I think that money should, should be going to the public safety building, not to the golf course. Now, I'm not against the golf course. I'm just saying from a procedural point of view, from what I heard as a voter at town meeting, um, it did not include, the words were, it does not include anything for the golf course in the estimates that are being presented. And it also said, and we will come back with supplemental, a supplemental request when we understand how much that is. So my two cents is figure out how much that is now and start engaging the selectmen and figuring out where does it come from and how do you get it. Don't try and play games. So we have some other important business. So what I would like to propose, unless someone disagrees with me, is um, I'm going to tee the issue up to the Board of Selectmen because I think they have to weigh in with what direction they want to go. Um, I was probably the one that made a lot of those comments because we literally had on our diagram what our cost included and didn't include. There was dotted lines. I remember it vividly. Um, but I think Mr. Litt's points are spot on in line with a lot of what all of us have said is we're trying to get this thing done and get it done most efficiently for the town, but we obviously want to follow what Bound Council is saying. It looks like Mr. Purple has he wants to read to us. So I'm going to tee the issue up, but I also want to tee the issue up to Mr. Pilecki and the golf course committee. So um, I'll, I'll coordinate with Mr. Rooney and make sure that that's probably been teed up. I think collaboration continues to be necessary, but I think we need to look to our appointing body for some direction of how they want to take this because it might not just be the clubhouse that the golf course committee needs funding for, right? It should be one, you're probably going to have one shot at this to get whatever funding may be needed. For the immediate, uh, for immediate consideration and for these, uh, the, the, the consultants that we've hired, does it make sense for them to continue on with the uh, anticipated bid package to include the relocation of the golf course so that at least we'll have some idea as to the costs associated with that that may have to be used as an ask for town meeting? Correct me if I'm wrong, I think we've already hired you to do that. Okay. Yeah, good. we're good at right. it. We just can't pay for the construction of it. Just can't pay for now. it. Okay. So, Mr. Purple, do you have any? Mr. Items Chairman, you want I will be clarify? extremely brief on this. I just want to the, the three areas that we did ask Bond Council about were the um, that they agreed were within the scope of the project based on the the language in in Article One, specifically the end of the the end of the article where it says cost incidental or related thereto for the public safety complex. Um, and for reasons that were that have already been discussed, so the design work for the parking lot, for the golf for the golf section of the parking lot, um, um, Bond Council said that could be included because, as been discussed, is that planning wants to see a full site um, when you go to planning, and therefore that was something that was determined to be within the scope of Article One. Again, we talked about the design work for the clubhouse relocation and also the um, uh, the uh, septic septic system, one joint septic system for everything. So those were the three items that were that was discussed with Bond Council. Okay. So I think more to come after tomorrow night 
um, if anyone has a strong view personally or about the issue, I would encourage you to get up and speak to it um, related to that. I'll obviously tee the issue up. We'll hear the temperature of the five members and go from there. Mm -hmm. uh, next item, project budget update. I think that was intertwined with everything we've spent a lot of time on tonight, so I'm going to skip over that. Project schedule update. Um, context has distributed the, the latest schedule. Just reminders, Board of Selectmen tomorrow night, conservation Thursday night, and planning next Monday night, along with our meeting starting at 6 o'clock. Um, and then I think our next building committee meeting wouldn't be until the new year unless something pops out of those three meetings. Any questions on the project schedule? Uh, next item is approved pre-qualification RFQ documents. So last time we were presented with two documents um, so that Context and Vertex could start to do, get everything into the central register to start the pre-qualification process. Um, does anyone have any feedback to Context that they, or sorry, Vertex, that they'd like to provide based on that discussion last time? I know you all took it home and read it, <laughs> cover to cover. <laughs> so, um, while well, folks dig for their notes, Mr. Lee, maybe just give a very, very brief overview of um, what we'll be voting and what you'll do from here with these two documents. So basically with a vote to move ahead, um, we will go ahead finalize those two documents and basically the only thing that needs to be finalized is them in them is the schedule for when they'll be required back um, we will put those out and give their give their respondents an adequate a good amount of time to respond because of the holidays coming we won't make them do until after the new year um, we'll get them back then the pre-qualification subcommittee I guess you'll call it will need to meet uh, well, a after a lot of homework, we'll need to meet and then compare our scores, um, hear about references, uh, and all those sorts of things so that we can have a completed um, list of pre-qualified subs and GCs that will receive an official invitation to bid. So right now, based on the schedule that Ellen sent out or handed out, you know, we need to send out those invitations to bid basically mid-February, a couple weeks before the bids, uh, the documents hit the street so the folks know to pull them and, uh, and, and take them out. So, you know, all of a sudden it's on us. Um, it's coming up pretty quick. So I would want to issue it probably, I wouldn't worry about it for this Thursday, Central Register deadline, probably the following Thursday, so that it would be, it would issue the, the Wednesday after that, which would be, with me briefly here. So we would central register on the 14th. Documents would be available on the 20th. And we would give folks one, two, three, probably four weeks to respond due back mid January. Uh, then that would give the reviewers one, two, three, four weeks to get the invitations to bid done. So, or the, the, re the reviews done. Okay. Are there any questions for Mr. Lemieux on those documents? What, they're going to pre qual off of the DD set? No, they don't even get the documents. They don't even get the documents. They don't, get the, they don't see anything until they know that it's coming in the document. We give them the, you know, the. We give them the specs on it, you know, 30 something thousand square feet, police fire station, hit the following trades. What we do do is we take the DD estimate, if we have it, and then we'll update it when we get the CD estimate, um, the values, so that the folks, when they open it, they say, oh, it's a roofing package worth 750,000, because there's parts of the pre qualification that deal with the dollar value of their intended spec section and how much revenue they make. You know, you don't, if somebody only has- Less, less their markup or something. $20,000 on the books for next year, and they're trying to pre-qualify mm -hmm. for a $700,000 roof, they're probably, they're probably gonna get scored low in that category. Okay. So, 
Um, so that's that's as close as they get to the actual bid documents. And and those values that you, that we give them in their pre bids, what are those tied to? The Our estimate. Estimate. The estimate. So again, it, you're doing it for primarily to see their bonding capacity, to see that make sure that their single project limit is above what the the value is for us. So if, for instance, the electrical portion of the job is, let's say, is worth a million and a half dollars, we want to make sure that every electrician that submits their DCAM certificate says that they are qualified at a number higher than that. And then we want to make sure that we get the letter from the bonding company that says they can bond a project of mm -hmm. that size as well. Yeah. Okay. Any questions on that? Any motions to move forward with that package? <laughs> Is there a second to uh, authorize the pre-qualification um, packages to be disseminated to the Central Register? Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Okay, motion carries unanimously. All right, so now Mr. Lemieux has asked for two members of our committee to assist in the grading of what comes back. Um, I have had extensive conversations with the town clerk um, about how to do this because there will be some confidential information, primarily financial statements that will come out of this process. Um, we have to set up a subcommittee. There is no way to not do it um, to capture the minutes from those. It'll probably be two meetings, one meeting, two meetings. <laughs> it's a it, meeting. Can we do a meeting? <laughs> with, can we, what can we do? We can't do a phone call then. Ideally, there needs to be one meeting when we see what we've received mm -hmm. so that we can divvy up, so that we can say, you know, it's silly to give to have everybody do reference checks. Basically, usually the architect and the OPM take them. We split them in half because, you know, we want to get two or three references for each one. He doesn't need to do what I'm doing. And then we bring those scores back and share them with the two individuals so everybody's reference scores match sheet to sheet to sheet. Um, we, so we need a meeting to to distribute. So my suggestion is you do that 30 minutes before or after one of these like broader yeah. meetings, mm -hmm. like tee that up, and then you have your big meeting whenever you're ready to have yeah, it. Yeah, I mean that you whoever the lucky individuals are, are going to leave here with a copy paper box full, <coughs> yeah. yeah, full of stuff. I think that's the easiest way to comply and. And really dot our I's and cross and our And then T's. ultimately we have one meeting later in February before somewhere around Valentine's Day is what the target's looking like, where we sit and talk about what the issues are. Again, as I've said in the past, the only issue that comes up is that when we ask for responses, if we don't get the minimum of three, we have to go out and give it another try, which is another two weeks. It's another ad to then see what we see what we get. Or if we kick someone out and it drops us below three, that can s slow things up too. So. Okay. So, primary responsibilities, you're going to need someone that can review financial statements. I'd love someone who can review financial statements. <laughs> okay. Well, and you know, I hate any them. other qualifications <laughs> to entice any of these nope. um, candidates to? Willingness <laughs> to read. <laughs> yes, Mr. Rooney. Be looking at construction documents. So, nope. what, what are we going to what are we going to be looking at? You're basically going to be looking at a, a a formatted resume of the company that House. basically talks about project management, who their project managers are, who their superintendents are, what their experience is. The the documents that I that you've seen before, um, the tables that are in there, they have to fill them out on those. So everybody's submission looks the same. So similar to the documents that we reviewed when we decided to hire you. D different, but, but, but a similar a similar state mandated. Yeah. Same thing for archi hiring architect designer selection. You would have done the, the same process. Okay, just okay. a different form. But it seems like it's going to be far sta more standardized, right? Like your proposal did not. Oh look yeah. Oh like yeah. 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 And, and basically, if you're not dealing with the reference pieces, there's whole sections you don't have to 
deal with. Your, yeah. We want your opinion on what you think about their PM and their experience. And got it. you've got a rubric kind of that is the RFP to look through to say, oh, this is worth this many points. And after you do your first four or five, you get into a groove and you know what the scores are and you can, you know. When calendar wise, would you expect this to be done? This needs to be done mid-January to mid-February. After the holidays. Okay. All right, anyone want to throw their name or recommend members of the committee? I'll help Otherwise, out. All right, David has offered to help. We need one more member. It can be an ex officio as well, if we choose to go that road as well. If you think reading financial statements is a plus, I do it. If you don't think it's that much of a plus, I it's don't need a to do it. You know, it's the financial capacity of the firm. It's very broad. So. And there's ways to make it look like there's more capacity than there is. I mean, so that's why helpful helpfulness in reading them is a plus. I have a lot of construction clients, and I've got a lot of real estate clients, so I can read the financials pretty easily, I think. It sounds like a ringing willingness to. <laughs> 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 uh, we have two volunteers. I just need a motion. Thank you all. No motion. <laughs> Pete, do you want to make a motion? I make a motion that we uh, approve the two. Cook and Mr. Officer. Mr. Officer to uh, be the representatives of the committee for the working group. Is there a second? Who would second it? Any further discussion? All those in favor? Any opposed? And I see two abstentions. Two abstentions. All right, the two nominees. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great, uh, you have some great people to help you out. No good deed goes unpunished. Yeah. Uh, the good news is the last two items on our agenda are going to go really quickly. So both firms decided to send me uh, invoices today for approval. So I chose not to forward them to you because you didn't have enough time to review them. So um, we will take those up next Monday night. Um, so I have to submit them a little earlier next time if they want them. And then um, we'll go from there. So I'm going to skip that agenda item. Um, other business that may come before the committee. Do anyone have any other business they want to take up tonight? Seeing none, is there a motion to adjourn? So, second. second by Mr. Wood. All those in favor, we are adjourned.